I'm Kevin Abdurrahman. My guest today is Lamia Tofi. Listen, Disney. My guest today is ferocious. <laughs> I was like, I was like, how can I forget his name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank, yeah. thank you, Google. Google. Thank you, Google, for the scene. Thanks. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then, oh God! Yeah. Oh, did I send you that? Yeah. Okay. Correct. Yeah. She speaks English, Arabic. Here. <laughs> But this has been so much fun. Thank you, I appreciate Honestly, it. Honestly, um, you're so easy to speak to. Thank you. Whether you like it or not, whether you know it or not, whether you believe for it to be true or not, your presence makes people feel something. Great, good, bad, ugly, your presence makes people feel something. My guest today is someone whom I naturally gravitated to because of her energy, authenticity, unique spirit, and just how I felt and how I feel every time I'm in her presence. Born and raised in Dubai, my guest wears a number of hats. She's an actor. She has a weekly show in Arabic. She also does voiceover. She's a storyteller. She hosts. She moderates, she writes, she translates. Is there anything she doesn't do? Hmm, we'll find out. She holds a BA and MA in journalism and mass communication from the American University in Cairo and a doctorate degree in childhood studies. She's been featured in several publications in the UAE, in the region, and as far as even Italy, in TV shows like MTV Italia. She speaks English, Arabic, Italian, and as she says, she also pretends to speak French. There are some people who, just with their presence, make the world a better place. And my guest today is one who makes the world a better place. I, for one, have a better world in her presence. During my research, I found a motto of hers, which when I read it, I felt that this was true to her core. The motto was this, to live is to laugh, listen, learn, and love. This is How Do They Do It. I'm Kevin Abdurrahman. My guest today is Lamia Tofi. How you doing? Hello. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. I'm so glad that you're here. <laughs> me too. I don't know what to say now after that intro. Apart from laughing at me the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just like, oh my God, I'm so embarrassed now. I want to run. I want to hide. But thank you. That was very kind of you to say. Very kind words indeed. Thank you for gracing us, Dr. Lamia Tofi. <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> Dying now. The, the doctor part, a lot of people don't realize or don't believe because they feel like it's not part of your character, right? Yeah, I don't give, a, I don't give off those uh, doc the doctor y vibes. <laughs> doctor <-y> vibes? <laughs> I don't. I'm not like, I don't know. I don't have my nose in a textbook the whole time Fair or enough. something. You know? yeah. I think people just look at you, they, they just assume you're happy-go-lucky. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which you probably are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am. I, just, I, I also studied a lot. <laughs> yeah, so. Respect the effort I put in. <laughs> oh, no, it's fine. I don't actually use it. It's very non-Arab of me, I think, because a lot of Arabs like to, like, really, um, I mean, rightfully so, maybe, uh, flaunt their yes. degrees. Yes, yes. I'm a doctor of this other. I've seen I'm, business cards with six degrees on them. Yeah, no, I only I, I don't I don't put the doctor before my name at all. Like no. only when I need to. I think when I uh, making a point. Well, no, if I'm if I'm doing it like if I'm taking part in an academic thing, mm -hmm. like if it's a serious uh, setting or something. But you won't find like storytelling by Doctor Lamia because that's kind of weird. <laughs> Like why, <laughs> you know? Um, I've known you since <laughs> 2009. Yeah, and th that was the the start of you. The, that, and that was through comedy. That was through stand-up comedy. Correct. Yeah. Um, we met, but then we had a phone call a few weeks ago, and we were talking, just catching up because it had been a couple of years. Yeah. And uh, what you said was interesting because when we, I just remember listening to what you had to say, and then I thought to myself, wow. She is really courageous. And I want to ask you this question, but first allow me to put the context in, because we talk about, in, you know, in people in life, we're talking about going for your dreams, you know, doing what you want to do. And it's about going towards, you know, that pursuit of what you want. And that pursuit, we attach courage to it. 
the fact that you're yeah. willing to face whatever it is to get what you want. What we don't realize is there is something else that's also courageous. And I'd like you to share what you have shared with me over the phone about, you know, when we met, that was your thing. You wanted, to, you were yeah. you know, starting on the path of being a comedian and you, you had done really well that you were doing shows in Dubai, you were doing shows in Abu Dhabi, you went to Kuwait, you went to Oman, yeah. uh, you went to Lebanon. And he's done his research. <laughs> She's also my friend. <laughs> it helps. Um, so share with me what you shared on the phone and how I arrived at the fact that you are courageous. Get inspired. Whether you're in Dubai for business or pleasure, the last thing you want to do is blow your budget on accommodation, which is why I recommend you check out our host venue partners, Rove Hotels. Beyond being price sensitive, what I love about Rove Hotels is the fact that they are a combination of cafe, culture, and just coolness. Even my guests, many of them, when they arrive before we record or after we finish recording the podcast, they actually comment. They go, wow, this place is cool. The vibe is amazing. And it is amazing. So if you're in Dubai for business or pleasure, I recommend you check out our host venue partners, Rove Hotels. This episode is brought to you by M Dojo. Whether you're in business or new to business, you need three things. A good website, traffic, and being able to convert that traffic into paying customers. That's what M Dojo does best. They're able to create for you a functional state-of-the-art website, drive targeted traffic, and put in all the elements needed in order to convert that into paying customers. Isn't that what you want? Of course it is. Give the team at MDojo a call and see how they can help you increase your sales and profits. Tell them I sent you. Their website, mdojo.co. Okay, I don't know how you arrived at that fact, but I'll tell you, you what I told you. And the viewers and the listeners will, will arrive to that. Okay, fact. so I'll tell you what. I believe that, I think that um, you, uh, how do I say it? Okay. As a person yes. living in the world, like living your life, you don't have to have one dream. Let me say that again. You don't have to have one dream. Uh, unchangeable dream yes dreams change yes you know I think you you can you can change your dreams uh, uh, because you grow and the person that you are today is not the same person that you are uh, that you were a year ago or that yes. you, I mean you change on a daily basis you change you your ideas change you know your your passion towards different things change etc so having said that, that's the premises of what shocked you is that because yes. I told him that I don't do comedy anymore, can but you, you were doing so good. <laughs> yeah, so can you take us through the journey of when you started and then how you arrived to that point, and then maybe perhaps your thinking process and your decision making process to okay? So I started, I start, I stumbled onto comedy. Uh, I have to say that when I first did comedy, it was uh, it was a very uh, you know by chance thing that I did, and uh, and when I did do it, I found that people enjoyed my comedy, they laughed, they... You're funny. Thanks. You are. Thank you. Um, I was, I mean, okay, there are better comedians, obviously, but I, I wasn't I wasn't doing a shabby job, and I mean, that's the reason why I kept going on stage and doing it over and over and over. And I did it for a few years, um, um, and uh, yeah, you know, I would occasionally write material, you know, I would uh, you know, do this, but... I wasn't writing material as often as I should have been writing material and so Dubai is really small and so after a while the audience was kind of like there was you know reaching the punchlines before me yeah because they heard it before they were still laughing bless them and, you know it's a very kind audience that we have yes. here you know um, but yeah maybe I didn't put in the work that I should have put in but that is not the reason why I, I left comedy I think the reason I, I decided to uh, to stop doing comedy is because at the same time, so after having done comedy for a few years, um, I started to dabble, and that is, I love to use the word dabble because it is it describes exactly what my process has been with the arts. It's mm -hmm. been like, oh, let me try storytelling, oh, let me try this, let me try that. And this whole dabbling is like exploring, like think painter, right? Mm -hmm. A painter who uses watercolors. After a while, they want to use oil, they want to use... Uh, 
acrylic they want to use whatever then they start using mixed media right it's 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 a process you start things and you ex you explore you, just don't know where it goes. you explore yeah because why not exactly because why not I mean that is that is essentially it you know what is stopping me um, from doing all of that and so I started to like uh, dabble doing different other things you know like uh, storytelling and, and acting and and that's when I realized that wait I'm enjoying the process yeah of acting more I'm enjoying that process more than uh, of being on stage and just uh, doing my my material which uh, I was starting to get bored of a little bit um, and also just kind of living you know punchline to punchline yes, you know? yes. I wanted the I wanted the layering of the characters I wanted the research I'm a nerd okay so if anything, you know, you already know that from my PhD that I like to do research and all that, and you know, and um, it kind of gives you a glimpse of my character, and so I like that. I like working on a character and and uh, exploring its different dimensions and working on my relationships with others on stage, and, and I like that. I like storytelling because I love kids, mm -hmm. and I love to interact with kids, and I love to. Um, you know, to, to, to do things with them. So so I found myself more in these. And because I have, unfortunately, only 24 hours in a day. Would you look at that limitation? Yeah. It's like, it drives me crazy. I have no idea. I wish I had just one more hour. But because they're only 24 hours in a day, yeah. and because I need to sleep and to, you know, also work and earn a living, um, so the time that I have to do my arts is very limited. And so I said to myself, okay, then why not just concentrate on the things that I enjoy more? That's not to say that I didn't enjoy comedy. I did. And there's nothing cooler than, you know, making people laugh and making people smile and, you know, brightening up their day and um, just get, and also as a, as, as a performer, getting all that positive feedback. That's right. amazing. Um, but that's exactly why yeah. it's, if you suck at something, it's so easy to go, okay, I'm going to cut this because I suck at it. The thing is, you're getting the laughs, you're doing good, yeah. and then can you take me through your thinking process when you started coming to the realization and that how did you make that decision, okay, this has got to go. Because it's this is where courage comes in, like it's difficult to cut something that's good. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to, I stopped doing comedy, right, but it's not like I... Maybe I'll never ever go back to it. I don't want. I don't want to say never. Sure. There are no rules. Maybe one day I'll be like, yeah, you know what? That's a like cool gig. You know, like let me do that and then go back to my material. Yes. Um, but I think what it is is that it's um, like I said. Uh, I started to explore other areas, mm. and and I started to gauge how I am responding mm -hmm. to these other areas. Um, because it's very important for me. I think enjoying things is like key. During the process. Of anything. Yeah. Of anything. If you're making a curry, if you're making, if you're baking, you got to enjoy the process. It's really funny that you it's say that. It's key. Because just, I think it was about three days ago, I yeah. was cooking with a friend. Yeah. And she goes, Kev, you're stressing me out. I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> she goes, you're stressing me out because... It, I can feel you without even looking at you, that yeah. you're just top, 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 your energy is just ruining, gonna ruin this food. I'm like, yeah, but we're out of time and I'm hungry. Know, and she's right. like, there's no point if you're not gonna enjoy the process. So, you know how like salad is good for you? Mm. Right. Are you salad allergic? No, if I eat a salad, you can tell, even if you, you can just tell that it's a chore. <laughs> you can just tell that no, I'm not just making like, it, eating it. Eating it, forget <laughs> making eating is that. But then I look at my other friends. Like I have friends, I have friends who actually I don't I don't get it. Yeah. But they actually enjoy salads. Yeah. Like I can see them. You feel it, yeah. I can see how they're like, you know, they're enjoying, you know, getting that tomato and that lettuce on the floor. I can just go, mmm, mmm, mmm. Oh, it's so fresh. I'm like, Her I'm, just, is I'm fresh. just looking at them, going, what? How is that even possible? But that's it. They're enjoying so. Each so for me, yeah. eating the salad feels like hours. It, like it feels like it's taking such a long time, and it's because it's cumbersome. Yeah. But for other people, it's just like oh, 
so good. I wish I had a bigger plate. I don't know. I struggle with those little side salad things yeah. that can be about. Yeah. But that's it. I mean, I mean, the point to the point of the salad. And, 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 and this was your that. and this was your decision making. You just go, hey, I enjoy the process of this yeah. at this stage of my life, at least. Yeah. And I mean, so I want to enjoy go. what I do. Exactly. Yeah. I want to enjoy what I do. I want to enjoy. I don't believe that there are there are rules that you need to uh, follow in terms of must dos and all that. You know, and uh, and I, I feel that you know, even if I spent the time putting in, you know, working on the comedy and all that, it's fine. Nothing is wasted. Nothing no. is wasted, and that's key well as well. Said, well said. You should never think that, oh my god, I've wasted so many years working on this. What do you mean, wasted? No, you didn't. I mean, there's a lot of things that I learned from comedy. First of all, comedy is the most difficult kind of performing arts because you're alone on stage, you own the microphone, and you gotta make people laugh. Yes. It's not an option. I can't decide today I'm gonna make you cry. No, for the stand up comedy. Right? So, so you have to be funny. You have that's to true. be funny, and people have to like. It's it's a lot of pressure. So it's very very hard to to do stand up comedy, and so uh, and I learned so I learned to have a thick skin. You know uh, what if what if I what if a joke falls flat? And believe me, oh they fall flat. You you yeah. haven't been to those shows. You just you've just been lucky. But uh, when I'm trying out new material, yeah. when I'm trying a new joke, sometimes it just goes. <laughs> I mean, world class comedians, all the big guys. You know, Chris Rock, Kevin yeah. Hart, Dave Chappelle. They, they, all their jokes at some point. Goes flat because that's how they sift through the joke. Yeah, but sometimes absolutely. it sounds good up, up in your here, head, and then you deliver it, and and I would tell the audience that I'd be like, "Great, well, that's sounded good in my head," and then they laugh. I'm like, "Thank yes. God, <laughs> you know, little consolatory fries, you know, like this." I'll take that one. Oh. And um, and then you learn how to like improve on your jokes. You learn to you learn you learn that you don't not everyone's gonna like you. It's really character building. Yeah, not everyone's gonna like you. You know, some people just don't. Some people just they don't think that I'm gonna be funny, and they they just they come in with that you know attitude already. Yeah, um, and others uh, others laugh, um, and it, so it makes you it makes you have this. So you don't run away when when you hit the first wall. Yeah, it doesn't matter. You just get up. You okay? Try that again. No, it's really well said. Let me said. try that again. <laughs> you know, it's when you really go well back. said that nothing gets wasted. I mean, when you break it down like this, yeah. what you learn even out of comedy is character building. Yeah, character building. Apart, apart from the many skills that you would have picked up. And also in the performing, uh, the other thing is when you learn, about, well, you learn like in the performing arts from comedy. I'm just I'm talking to you about what you learn from comedy as a, you know, to build your character. But also, uh, in terms of uh, doing comedy, and I did a, I did some improv as well, mm -hmm. uh, which improv I, I still enjoy doing. Yes. Yeah, I'm not stand up, but improv. Now, improv improv is key to acting because what if you, I'm in a play and it's happened and your co actor forgets their line? I mean, you can freeze. That's right. Or you can just keep going. Yeah. And you will only be able to keep going if you've done. Things where you've had to improvise. Yes, you know, and you build that experience. And so, uh, and so, I think that you you definitely learn from everything. Mm. Get inspired. One of the questions that I get frequently asked is, Kev, how can I increase my motivation? We see great individuals, we see achievers, like many of the guests that I'm bringing on the show. They have the energy. They do so much. They're in a state of flow. How do they do it? Well, my team and I have released an article which I've made available on kevinabdurrahman.org forward slash blog, the ultimate biohacking guide to increasing motivation. Or you can simply Google Kevin increase motivation and the article should pop up right at the top. It's absolutely free. Read it and most important of all, take the bits and pieces that are relevant to you and apply it into your life to increase your motivation. I hope you find the article of value. If you do, feel free to leave your comments and also share it with your circle of friends. Again, you can Google it, Kevin Increase Motivation. It will be the first link that pops up or on my website, kevinabdurrahman.org forward slash blog. But the, the reason I wanted to highlight the courage, again, just coming back to that point of transition of letting it go, because when you let go of something to try something new because you enjoy the process, that's you being honest with yourself. Yeah. I've come across many individuals who are honest with themselves. Mm -hmm. They might be lawyers, doctors, um, accountants. I'm just trying to think of the different people that I've come across, even athletes, who have come to a point where when we're having an honest conversation, they're like, Kev, 
I'm not enjoying what I do. I'm like, so why are you still doing yeah. it? They're like, because I'm good at it. Mm, and stuck. it gives me a great living. Yeah. And I'm like, what would you like to do? Like one person said, I want to be an artist. I'm like, well, at, at some point you're going to realize that if your heart is not fulfilled, then the prestige of what other people think, yeah. the title, the fact that you're good at it, the fact that you have a certain like standard of living where you can drive a Ferrari and have a penthouse apartment, will not make you fulfilled because you know that your true fulfillment is being an artist to paint on a canvas or whatever it is for you. But you know what, I mean, <clears throat> to give them uh, like, you know, understanding and justification for sure. how they feel. I was never like Michael McIntyre, mm -hmm. whom I just learned you've never seen. But I'm sure you're gonna like, <laughs> She's going to be shooting me a lot of links. <laughs> I know of the name, know, I just haven't but, but you know watched what I mean? like, this comment. I'm not, I'm not like, I was never that big. Okay. I was never like a big comedy name. Mm -hmm. In order for me to say, oh no, look at the empire that I've built. I can't back, on, you know, back away now. Yeah. I'm still someone who is dabbling and doing this for fun. Yes. And, not really earning a lot of money, I have to say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's just uh, it's something that I do. Yeah, there is a little bit of money, but not like enough for me to say like, oh, what about if I? It's not like a thing. Like if I stop doing comedy, then things are gonna fall down and crash around. Right. I'm not like that. I'm not at that level. Right. Um, and so the risks are low. Yes. I mean, worst case scenario, I'll just go back to comedy. You know, if that doesn't work for me, well, at least I'll go back to my comedy. Right. Yeah? So, but maybe the people that you're describing is harder for them. Mm. Maybe that's where they need the courage. Oh, it is hard, yes. That's where they need a lot of courage yeah. to say, okay, you know what? This is, I know people are going to get shocked. You know, I got shocked when I left comedy. Don't care. But, you know, people will be like, oh my God, you know, he's stuck playing tennis and now he's gonna do something else you know yeah. be a fashion designer or whatever like, but you know what I mean like it's uh, when you're when you're a big name then the stakes are high yes what about the feeling that we're too old for something oh yeah right and then if like let's say for example I'm 39 and I decide oh wow I like to I like this feeling of dancing bachata but now I have to go and start all the way from the beginning Mm. feel like a beginner um, you know not take all these classes just to come up to a certain level and then see all these 20 year olds like dancing like pros yeah what about that feeling oh this is something that do you know how old I am no want to share do you, I, I don't mind sharing but let's do this on camera do you know my age I don't yeah come on you probably have googled everything about me just more yeah i wanted to know a good sense of you i just uh, don't believe in age so it's not something that i okay. i go looking for okay guess 30. he's just being polite she, she doesn't even look 30. if you're watching this <laughs> on video drop down in the comments below guess her age before she before what you're gonna find out i guarantee you you don't look a day over 30. okay so i'm 43. Holy smoke! <laughs> what do you use, girl? Next question, what creams do you use? Because I oh, need a different video. <laughs> <laughs> this program is sponsored by no. um, You look great. Thank, oh, you, look great. thank you. Thank you. I would have never for a million dollars picked 43. Yeah, 43, definitely. Guaranteed, none of you guys would have got it either. I mean, I told you I have a PhD and stuff. It's not from yeah. a genius child. <laughs> I don't know what I'm no, I know, I know people who've got PhDs, they're 25, 26. That's true, actually. I'm That's like, true. hey, 30 sounds about right. That's a good point. But um, no, definitely, I'm 43. And when I started, so when I, in 2009, you say when wow, I started I doing. I was 33 back then. Exactly. Exactly. I definitely didn't know that. I was 33 when yeah. I started, and a lot of people are like, are you serious? Are you going to start doing something completely new now? Yep. And uh, and I was like, yeah, why not? I mean, why not? I like why it. Really? It's just a matter of fact. You don't give it that much thought. I didn't, yeah, I, I, don't, I didn't think about it. I didn't like, you know, for me, it's just like, um, it's, a, it's a, it's, yeah, I, I want to do it. Let me just do it. I mean, why? Who's keeping tabs and who's, uh, you know, and, and why shouldn't I? What if I'm good at it? 
And you, and you hear all these stories, I mean, this is not new, but you hear all these stories about people who, I don't know, wrote their first book when they were 40 something, or they started acting when they were in their 50. You know, you yes. hear all these stories and you think, oh, how lovely, and so why shouldn't I, you know, why not me, you know? Yes. And so, um, and so I really think that, you know, uh, when, you, when you start uh, exploring things in the world, you shouldn't be limited by, by your age. There are other limitations. I'm, I'm not saying, no, the sky, nothing's going to stop. No. Age is not a limitation. There are other kinds of limitations. Yeah. There are physical limitations. Sure. There is geography sometimes. Sure. That's, even though that's kind of decreasing now, but, you know, geography. There is, uh, what else? I can't think. Let's like say when you, but yeah. off camera, you said, you know, if I want to be a brain surgeon, well, that requires yeah, 20 there years. Yeah, that's a good point. And yeah. are you willing to do 20 that's years it. That's to get to that of, point? Yeah. yeah, exactly. I mean, that's like, oh, you know, that would have been a nice thing to do when I was, you know, young. You yeah. know, start working on that when I was younger. Um, but again, like, you know, there, there are certain things where you... Age is not one of them. Mm. Let's just put it that way. I don't right. believe that age is is one of them, and I don't think gender is either. You know, so mm. I don't think you know being male or female. You could probably do anything now. And also the know, care of what others think. Yes, though that I've is another. So yeah, you know, thick skin. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, when I started doing comedy, of course. Um, not everyone around me was enthused about it. Uh, you know, people started saying, "Oh, but you know, you you should be focused more on your academics. You know, you should do this or that." Or and I love uh, it how people just have like yeah. random people giving you opinions. I'm like, buddy, you don't even know me. Why are you giving me your opinion? Or or maybe, but it's not it's not malicious. You know, people don't give me these. Um, these gems of their thoughts because they're <laughs> because they're malicious, you know. Pearls they're, of wisdom. <laughs> there's pearls of wisdom, <laughs> but um, but, it, but it's because they it, because they care about me. Yeah. You know, I, I don't think anyone actually wants to put me down. Sure. It just, I'm, I've never faced that myself. Yeah. Um, I don't think people want to put me down, but I think they just want to. They care about me. They think I should be focused on what is what. Uh, what they feel is what right. is going to give me a better future. Mm. What is going to give me a you know better stability in the future. And, and honestly, I've always been one who followed her heart. Um, when I decided to become a freelancer, I realized that I was giving up financial stability um, in order for myself to pursue things that I love. And uh, do I regret that? Many times, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Especially when rent comes around. But other than that, <laughs> but other than that, I'm like, okay, you know, I'm, I'm actually being able to do what I love, and you know, and it's so yeah. It's uh, it's just a matter of um, what was your question? <laughs> I what since since I got you in a lost moment, <laughs> um, your earrings mm -hmm. are totally you. Can we get the camera on the on the earrings? Okay, hold on. That's that's freaking fantastic. Yeah. You're gonna have to move your finger. Oh, I'm like, there, go there. There it is. There it is, right there. It's you so you, it? the smiley face. Yeah. Have you always had this trait? What? Smiling? Just smiling, and you, you walk into a room, <laughs> and I felt this when I first met you, was, was as a result of seeing you on stage. Well, yeah, because it was a comedy show. Yeah, but <clears throat> there are a lot of people that get on stage. Right? Some yeah. of the top comedians in the world. No, no. There is there is there is their stage presence, and then when they walk, the moment they step out of the stage, they're serious and they're back to their personality. They have a different stage personality. Uh, You're not one of those. No, I'm you were. Saying. This was you on stage. This was you off stage, and you can just feel it. I mean, that's why I came to you and I said hello, and, so, and, and yeah, we became friends. I remember that. And then every time I've met with you or we're speaking on the phone, even through your WhatsApp messages. <laughs> Like oh she's just awesome. There's something oh, that I said. My no, brother no. feels it. I'm like blushing right no, now. No, the thing is, my brother feels it. So my question is back to my question before I forget it. Have you always had this, or was this something that was developed? What, like just yeah. your personality. Um, yeah, I don't think that something has made me happier. I don't know. Uh, I don't. I don't think. I don't re recall like not being this. <laughs> Awesomeness. I do good. I don't know what to say. 
Oh, okay, it's embarrassing. But was it getting warm here? <laughs> <laughs> okay, no. Okay, um, I've never changed. Yes. I'm just me. I like to laugh. I enjoy a good laugh. Uh, my mother is extremely funny. Um, my brother is very funny, and my sister is very funny. I mean, we just we're just funny people. And you, and, it seems like you're comfortable me, in your own skin. And and I'm very comfortable in my own skin. I mean, that's the only reason you put a smiley face <laughs> yeah, as I'm an like, earring. Like you got to be comfortable in your own I'm skin. I'm very very comfortable in my skin. I'm very comfortable just being who I am, and uh, just. Just I, I like. And if you don't like it, I like laughing and I like making people happy, and that's just something that I enjoy doing, uh, which kind of uh, yeah makes comedy a very natural yes. thing to do. But not but I, I do and I do enjoy comedy. My bad. Just it's the stand up comedy that I veered away from. But but um but even when I'm acting, I do enjoy doing comedic roles a lot more than dramatic roles. Nice I, one. I like to challenge myself by doing a little bit of drama. Because just because I want to challenge myself and get out of my comfort zone, because honestly, for me, comedy is my comfort zone, and and I know that as a, as a, as someone who enjoys acting, I know that um, uh, many people and I've spoken to people and many people around me say that they find drama easier than comedy. Right. Um, but I've been blessed by the fact that it's for me it's the other way around. I guess it's a blessing because I, I enjoy it more. Uh, and so I enjoy comedy more. I, I have comedic timing, and and that that helps me a lot. So. Uh, so you've transitioned now from that to doing plays and actively being a storyteller. Yeah. So what I do is I am an actor. Uh, I'm a storyteller. So I've acted in plays. Mm -hmm. I've acted in. Uh, I have a few short movies, and I have a web series uh, participation that I've done. It's a little thing. And, is it available um, online if anyone would like to yeah. watch it? Yeah, yeah, the, the web series is. We can make those links available. Three, three episodes, they were, it, was, it was fun to do. Okay. It was here in Dubai. And um, the, the movies aren't available online. Yeah. And uh, what else? Uh, so I've, I've, done, I've done that. And uh, I've also done things like uh, Murder Mysteries. Which I really enjoy. Have you ever been to a murder What's restaurant? That? No, I don't oh, really know what it is. Oh, it's so cool. All right, so it's basically like people in a restaurant and then like having dinner or um, usually it's dinner. Usually it's over dinner. People are having dinner and then like the group of actors will come in and they start playing out scenes and then like someone dies. And... While people are having dinner. Yeah. Sometimes. Okay. Someone goes, oh. You know, they come in like that and then and then. Oh, so, so these guys are not in on it. No, no, they know. No, wait, they know that they're coming from a murder mystery show. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. It's not like no. <laughs> I was gonna say this sounds like candid camera. No, 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 no. Like people know that they're coming from a murder mystery show. Okay. But how the format uh -huh. is that you know, um, the format is that they watch uh, between their their meals. They watch scenes happen. So actors come in, they interact with each other, you interact sometimes with the audience, and then someone dies, and then like everyone is suspect, and the audience has to kind of guess who did it. Oh, that sounds awesome. I know. That it's so awesome. much fun. I, I get excited just thinking of murder. I love murder mysteries. Um, and I've done a few of those, and they're so much fun because then, because then you allow them, so everyone sitting is an investigator, and so they can ask you questions. They can ask the character questions nice. about their relationship to each other, just to, to try and guess, like who did it. It's like an Agatha Christie book. Yeah, and they, they want to guess who did it, and so afterwards you give them. So every table has like paper, and they have to like write, you know, um, who did it and why, and then we take these papers backstage, and then we decide on a winner, and then usually the winner gets, I don't know dinner for two at this same restaurant sure. <laughs> at a different date, for example. Well, what a cool concept. It's great because I think that this is just one format of murder mysteries. Murder mysteries can be done like different, like in parties and yeah, the different I ways of doing I such a thing existed. Yeah, what yeah, cool, yeah. Murder mysteries. <laughs> an engaging concept, like yeah. to have as an experience. Yeah, it's, just, it's fun. It's fun to do because um, I like it because there's a little bit of interactivity as well and like with, with the audience, so you improvise. Yes. You have a script, but when they ask you questions, you gotta answer in character. So it's a little bit of improv as well, which I enjoy. 
So um, that's so much fun. So yeah, so I've done plays, movies, I've done maybe mysteries, I've done um, you know, uh, you know, storytelling. I mean, right now when we were speaking just before we started shooting, um, getting a tea and a coffee, you were saying that. Um, Thank you for my tea. Yeah, but that is another reason I mentioned this. <laughs> But what you mentioned was it's been hectic, so you know, sleep would be a nice thing to have. But you know, you've yeah. just been at it because you're working towards a play, or yes. you're working, you're practicing for a play. Can you run us through, as an ignorant person, um, perhaps you know, w what are you working towards, and yeah. um, how does it come about? And for someone that doesn't know, perhaps you can give a thing of like you know, how was it written? Did you write it, or you know? What's involved and so forth. Okay, so this is actually going to be my first uh, participation in an Arabic language production, which is kind of weird because I'm Egyptian and you know <laughs> it's my mother tongue. <laughs> but I've only I've only ever acted in English and, and in Italian. So uh, in this case, uh, this play was written by uh, um, an actor who okay. lives here. Um, his name is Mohammed al sawi and he's uh, he's written the play, and he's also one of the actors in the play. Right. He's also written some of the music of the play. And so he, he does a lot of things. And so he writes the play, and then... shout out Mohammed. <laughs> shout out. Yeah. And um, they give you a script so for yeah. your character. So he wrote the script, right. and uh, it's it's uh, the group is called the Art Box Group, mm -hmm. and um, so we're all doing it under under the, the Art Box Group. Uh, we're all actors, and the, the director, and the actors, and the people working on it, like the crew. We're all uh, residents here. We all live here. Uh, we're all Egyptian, and um, a whole heap of Egyptians in Dubai. Yeah, yeah, like I said. There are a lot of Egyptians. Yeah, there are many Egyptians in the world. No, no, I just went for the play. Oh, for the play. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, and so it is an Egyptian language play. Yes. Uh, and uh, it's uh, it's comedic, social. And what interested me was when we were in the elevator, and I was saying, okay, so you're learning your script, but then you said something about the fact that when it's written, there yeah. is a process because so much of it evolves. It does. From it does. The initial write up, and I'm completely unaware of this whole. So, so because it's written, I mean, when you're doing Shakespeare, you don't really have uh, that much of a leeway to change. Uh, you can't change Shakespeare, you right. just gotta stick to it. Um, but because this was written uh, by someone who lives here, and he wrote the, the first draft, and, you know, and then eventually what happens is you then, as a group, uh, you, you, you do a table reading. And you start acting it, and so what I was trying to tell you earlier is that these kind of scripts can change, and most of the time they do evolve, uh, because even as a writer, when your uh, words go off the page, uh, and you see them, you see the characters, uh, you know, reading your lines, you realize, okay, wait, that that no, that maybe we should change that, you know, and you start you start the process of of uh, of changing the script, uh, and sometimes uh, an actor can come up with you know with a line and say oh how about we can say this and how about we say that and so it's a very fluid process. Uh, eventually, of course, there needs to be a time where like okay no the script does not change <laughs> you know you reach that point of course but the process to reach that is very fluid and it's very uh, it's very collaborative. Mm -hmm. um, it's great to have a script to build. You know, from and to to work from, and it's very important to, uh, for everyone involved to kind of be flexible about, you know, for example, if the if the writer says no, we're not changing a single word from what I wrote, then it becomes a bit hard, you know. But it's not like that. It's more. It's very very collaborative, and um, and so that's the process. So so yeah. So scripts do change. They do evolve. The thought that I had, or just as you, you highlighted the fact that you're Egyptian, you're born and raised in Dubai, you're Egyptian, Arabic here so far, yet you speak fluent Italian. How did that come about? I learned it. So, okay. Yeah. Cause just it, by... Because it was so much fun to hear them speak Italian, to hear like Italian speak Italian. I remember I used to like... Yeah, and I say this often. I, I I used to look at Italians speaking Italian, and they're like, hmm. 
I want to do that with my mouth. You know? <laughs> so the fact that you're a natural, like, were you a natural? Did you just pick it up? Was no. You a lot of effort? No. <laughs> no, I didn't just pick it up. Like a baby would, oh yeah, just speaking Italian now. It was a lot of work. It was a lot of work. Yeah, I mean, one of the things that really, um, one of the things that really get, gets to me is when people say, oh, it must have been so easy for you. You must have, you, I'm sure you have a knack for languages. You must be so talented. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Because that makes it sound like it was easy. No, this was a hard work. So I, I actually worked a lot to learn Italian. I, I took the courses for two and a half years. Okay. Evening classes, three times a week, two hours every time. I did like so many levels of Italian. <laughs> two and a half years, not natural. Mm. There's a big difference. What was interesting though, you were saying <laughs> that um, even though you pretend to speak French, <laughs> but learning the Italian language actually helped. helped decipher the grammar? Yeah, it helped me crack it. Okay, okay so I'll tell you what. So I learned. Uh, when I learned Italian, I had to learn a new uh, logic, a new logic to uh, of speaking, of thinking of a language. Because every language, I believe that every language has an inherent logic nice to one. how okay. to how the sentences are structured, to how they think of things, how they describe things. It's just the logic. And once you and understand that, grammar. it's like a foundation. Yeah, it's like, and you you just need to crack it. And so, uh, prior to learning Italian, I only knew English and Arabic. And so I had no other Latin language in my, you know, my head. <laughs> French, Italian, Spanish, and Portuguese, they all share the same kind of grammatical logic. Yeah. So um, the same way of, um, yeah, same kind of grammar, just different words. Yes. But the grammar is very similar. But when you're learning English and Arabic. It's completely different. Yeah. It's completely different. And so, um, so. Uh, cracking the, the logic when I learned Italian then made French easier for me uh, to learn uh, and I, I did I did like a year of French but uh, I would rather say that I pretend to speak French because if I make mistakes then people will be more forgiving <laughs> but you do speak Oh, okay. okay, but it's funny though because people tell me like, "Oh my God, your accent is amazing in French." I'm like, "Yeah, thanks." I can do the sounds. I, I can do the sounds. I'm a parrot. I can do I can do sounds very well, but there's nothing to put inside the accent. You right. know, the accent <laughs> means nothing. There are no words coming. <laughs> and with the Italian, was it? I mean, because we we're fortunate to live in Dubai and we hear so many different languages here. Yeah. What did they say? I think we have 140 or 160 nationalities that live yeah, in Dubai. Yeah, lots of yeah. And so was it here? Was it traveling in Europe? I mean, why Italian? Why not something else? Yeah. Okay. So. Um, Do you remember that the time? Of course. <laughs> of course. Of course. Decision. I was uh, I was at university. Okay. So this is what happened. This is a classical example of what happens when you have a dream that. Uh, starts early but then it kind of incubates in your brain for a while mm -hmm. until it comes out but it's always there now if it disappears that's fine because it means that it wasn't something that you feel strongly about, about that's right. to begin with so who cares move on but when i was at university uh i was staying in the dorms and i my my uh, roommate was from libya and she spoke she spoke Arabic, English, Italian, and French. And uh, one day she makes me hear this song. And she's like, oh, I'm going to let you hear this song. And it's amazing. And you won't understand what it says, but just enjoy the music. And it was in Italian. I was like, OK. So uh, then she played this song. And I was like, oh, this is really great. What is he saying? And she's like, oh, no, 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 no. It's too long. She said, I'm not going to translate it. I'm like, oh, is that so? So while she slept, I stole her CD. That, back in the day. Back in the days, it was a CD. It was a CD. Yes, sorry, new generation. <laughs> That's a giveaway for my age. Um, I stole her CD. And you know how like CDs uh, had, I don't know if they still do that in 
today's CDs, but anyways. They would have a booklet inside of Yeah, like a little thing with like all the words inside. I don't think they do because that would be like silly because now I can find it on Google. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, forget it. Um, so I took that and I went to the university and I went to the lab and I opened the, the book and um, yeah, so needless to say there was no there was no Google yeah. or anything. This is pre Google. Pre Google. So I remember sitting on one of those those tiny mats and um, and just I, I, I typed out all the words of the song, like I didn't know what I was typing, but I just said oh, Double space print. I went back to the room and I was like, translate this now. I said, I need to know exactly what he's saying. Because you like the song? The because song? I like the song. I liked I liked the the, the the song itself, the fluidity of the of the music and and then when she translated it, it was it was to me it was like an eye opener because I was like, Oh my god, this is like this is this is uh, poetry. Yeah. It's so beautiful. It's uh, it's not just uh, you know, hey baby, I love you. You know, it's like no, it's 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 more than that. It's it's a, it was very poetic, and uh, and I said, okay, that's it. I'm learning this language someday. That was it. That was the yeah. decision. And then ten years later, I, I started seriously learning. There there have been and, a and few attempts. And so that dream attempts. was shelved. It was yeah. It was kind of shelved. I did take a, like a little class okay. uh, at the time. But uh, I was too busy with my university that I didn't really focus right. a lot on, on the class. So I, so I, I didn't uh, follow up on it. And I was like, oh, I can't do this now. I was young. I was like, what, uh, 19 at the time? And I was like, no, I'm too busy. I need to graduate. And so I kind of, so it was there. The passion was there, but it was shelved. And then when did it become I'm doing this? Okay, so when I got my master's in 2004, 2005 was when I was done. Four or five, yeah, my master's. Um, hold on, it's gonna four. But this is my graduation ring, see, it says so four. <laughs> A reminder in case I forget. Yes, you know, yeah, these are called um, memory aids. <laughs> Just in case I don't know who I am or these have my university, my university um, take me logo. Back, take me back here. <laughs> The logo. No, see, there's a really cool actually. See, 1990s. You see it? It's like this. This is from my. This was from my BA, and this was from my MA. Yeah, 97. Yeah, 97. Oh, four. That's yeah. awesome. That's so cool. Right? Very cool. <laughs> Anyways, we we diverge. Um, and so right after I got my master's, I decided it's now or never. See. I believed in an age limitation at the time. Okay. I believed that if I didn't start today, learning the language was going to be very difficult. Because I, I thought, uh, you know, to learn the language, you need to start early, you need to start, you know, when, when you're a child. Um, and so I was, uh, I kind of had this little panic moment, like, oh my God, does that mean that... I'm never going to learn Italian. No, no, no. But I want to learn Italian. So I threw myself in it. I guess in that, at that point in time, that limitation helped drive you. Push me. Yeah. Because I thought if I didn't work double, yes. then I'm never going to learn it. Because I'm not, I'm not young. I'm not gonna, my mind isn't as uh, spongy and yeah. supply and all that. And so, and so I, I pushed myself harder and harder. And, um, and yeah, and I was telling you, you need to, when you, when you learn a language, you really need to have the passion for it. Yes. I mean, if you don't have a passion for to learn a language, you won't make it. It's, really, it's active desire because I also mentioned to you that I did five years yeah. of French at school. Yeah. One yeah. hour every day, five days a week for five years, and I probably know six words. So it's not just turning up to class, it's that actively wanting yeah. to do it. You need to dig and dig and dig. Because, right. Because School. Like I went. I studied uh, at the Italian Cultural Center uh, in Cairo, and this is a big shout out to all my amazing, amazing uh, teachers. They were amazing because they really uh, they were at the top of their game. They 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 taught me a very good foundation for the language. But I do believe that in order for you to learn a language, you need to go beyond that. You need to go beyond your six hours in class. You okay. need to go beyond that. Uh, you learn the grammar in class, but then you need to read books. How will you accumulate vocabulary? Yes, there's there are words that you take in class, 
But what about other words? What about maybe uh, specialized words in different fields um, that you might need for your work, for mm -hmm. example? Uh, what about um, what about slang? Like in class, the teachers would maybe sometimes they would use a few words in slang, but most of the time they we would stick to to the regular Literature. like, yeah, like regular, regular regular you know non slang Italian. But what about the slang? What about the things that people say on the street? Like I need to know what they're saying, and these are the kind of things that you learn just purely by exposing yourself to language. So what were you doing beyond the six hours a day, or for, you know, for three days? What were you doing? I was a little bit crazy. Go on. I, I'm afraid if I tell you, you'll think I'm crazy. Well, no, it's, this is just to dissipate the perception of natural. That's true. That's true. I, I was I was afraid that you'd say, "Let me," but I already think you're crazy. But he didn't say that. Okay. Some things <laughs> need not be said. Yes. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what I did. So um, I had a very complex method. Method one, <laughs> part one of my method. Take one. note, language <laughs> learning. I I uh, used to buy. Do you know those uh, those charts that you used to you know in school? You do your assignments on the right? chart paper. Yeah, yes. I didn't do my assignments on those. But you know, oh yeah, in class they used That's to. That's what yeah. they used to do. So I used to buy white, pink, and blue. Okay. And I used to cut them into little squares. I used to make flashcards for yeah. myself. And on the blue blue squares, I would write all the masculine words. Because unfortunately, Italian, French, and all these languages, they're gendered languages, yeah, it's a which is extremely difficult because you have to learn which word is what. You know, And there are rules, but these rules have a lot of irregularities to them. And so it's not really. So, anyways, so I needed to know which words are masculine towards the And I know in my head, when I think of the word, I'm going to think, did I read that on a white background, or I mean, on a pink background, or on a white, on a blue background? The white ones were for verbs. Okay. So I used to have all these uh, words written, and their English was on the other side, and then I used to put them in this uh, big bag. And in Cairo, I did. I don't drive. <laughs> No, I don't drive in Cairo, um, and so I, I'm always commuting on buses and whatever transport. And so in in the bus uh, or in whatever mode of transportation I'm on, I would just continuously test myself. This and is, and um, the color was that's a technique for association. So you yeah. remember, I saw this on blue, so um, it must be masculine. masculine. Oh, yeah. good one. That's it was a good just one. A, yeah, it was just a thing that I did. Like Very that. cool. So I used to have all these things. The crazy lady with the bag was just. <laughs> Testing yourself in the middle of public oh, transport. Oh no, I just went through this word yesterday. What is it? Uh, oh, okay. It goes back in. If a word is like a completely known, then it gets chucked because I don't want to keep pulling the same word that I already know. Right. So, so that was one thing that I did. And then I, the other thing that I did is I, I, I didn't know any Italians in Cairo at the time when I started. Later on, I started knowing more Italians, but in the beginning, I only knew my teachers. And so, uh, and I really wanted to chat. Uh, and so I would just go online. Kids, do not try this. Uh, but I would just go online and chat with strangers. <laughs> I just feel like, hello, ciao, uh, come stai? You know, and I feel like I was like very. I, my my Italian in the beginning was obviously very limited. But and this I, was back in the days when there was bulletin boards. Is that? Oh my God, I'm not that old. This is 2005. Okay. <laughs> no. Where would you chat in Italian? Uh, Skype. Uh huh. Okay. I would just find people on Skype, or I would go into those forums. Forums. I guess that's what I was going to say. Forums. Right. forums. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Forums. Wait, forums don't exist anymore. No, they do. Oh, okay. They do. They do. Okay. All right. So yeah, yeah, forums and like Skype, or just be like, I don't know, maybe. And I and I and I I would do that like two three hours a day, just uh, chatting with these people, um, and awesome. and just with a with yeah. the dictionary going. What did he just say? Mm -hmm. That way it is. I'd be like one second, right, and then I would respond. My but my my response was very very limited um, because I didn't know the words and and in the beginning I would I we only learned the present tense right and so I would write in the present tense even if I'm talking about something that happened yesterday I would use the present tense but then in brackets I would say past tense and I would just keep going because I didn't know how to conjugate the verbs. So I'll just keep going. So awesome.
Um, so that I also listened to uh, later on when I did go to Italy, I, I I ended up meeting some of them, and some of them are still friends till today. Brilliant. Yeah, but um, that's what I did. And uh, what else? Oh God. Um, I, I would watch movies. Okay, so first of all, you know how they tell you, like, watch a lot of movies, not in the beginning. Guys, do not do that in the beginning because it can be demotivated. Demotivating. Yes. Especially if you watch uh, uh, television. Yeah, because I, like, I tried to, yeah. I'm, well, one of the goals on my list is to learn Spanish. Yeah. And so I tried to put Netflix on to watch the Money Heist, which, yeah. which is a Spanish in thing. In Spanish, no. And I'm like, God, it sounds so good, but there's no way I'm going to learn it like this. <gasps> Don't do that. Yeah. That's I was like that. I was I was almost gonna slip into that because I would watch like Rai Uno, Rai Due, and I'd be like these are the stations, and I'd be like, wait, I'm never gonna I'm never gonna be able to speak like that. I'm never gonna be able to speak like that. And then I realized, what am I doing? This is this is kind of productive. Like what? This is not helping me. Yes. So I stopped. I was like, nope, nope, not doing that. So in the beginning, I completely relied on things that are subtitled, uh, and I was and I was completely at peace with that. Uh, I would watch movies, for example, with subtitles, and throughout the movie, I'd be writing. I'm writing anything and everything. I'm writing, whether it's the Italian that I'm hearing, or the subtitles, or uh-huh. both. If they say an expression, they oh, interesting expression. And so... And then you're going back and forth? No, because this was usually in the cinema. Like okay. When it was like the Cairo film festival. So you just had to be quick? I had to be very quick, and writing in the dark, and my notebook looked like, like these lines were up and down, because I didn't know where I was <laughs> but the things you do and so I and so the things you do when you're committed yes and so what I'm trying to tell you and of course and I would listen to songs I mean the other thing is I would listen to songs um, and I would try to first understand what they're saying without looking up the words and then I'd look up the words to test my did I hear this right and, and all of that eventually I reached a point where I could just switch on Italian television and I'm fine with the talk shows I'm fine with the series of I get it. Mamma mia, yes. Oh, I of get it. <laughs> <coughs> but to get to that point of natural was a lot of work. It was a lot of work. Um, Thank you. It was a, it was a it was an accumulation of these little little uh, tasks, a little effort that I've done. And and eventually when you see it pay off you're like, yes. You know, and nothing uh, is a bigger compliment to me than when I meet an Italian who says, "Could you live in Italy?" Nice. And I'm like, "Yay!" <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, "No." Get inspired. Imagine if you could present yourself, your thoughts, and your ideas with clarity and confidence. Imagine if you could speak to influence. And impact. Imagine if you could communicate like a commanding and charismatic leader. Well, you can, given the right information and the investment of effort from your end. How do I know that? As a public speaking coach, I work with CEOs, world leaders, and presidents. And when they hire me, they expect nothing short of results. And over the years, it's been two decades now, two challenges have risen for me being unable to help the majority of people. I'm usually on a plane, with the majority of my time being booked a good year or two in advance. And my one-on-one session to work with someone in person generally starts at $20,000. So we solved the problem by making my public speaking course available for you online. Everything that I teach my clients when I'm working one-on-one. Thoughts, tips, strategies how to do things, all on video, all sequenced in the right order for you to be able to watch, re-watch, practice, and refine your presentation, your speaking, and your overall communication skills. And guess what? You will get results. Now, you can have this course, not for the $20,000 that my clients pay me when we work one-on-one. You can have it for $9.97. That's right, just $9.97. You might be thinking, well, why are you offering something that you charge $20,000 for, for $9.97? It's simple, because those who want to work with me one-on-one will still hire me. But for many whom I might be out of their budget, 
This is a great way to develop their communication skills, to cut through the noise, to rise above the rest, and to beat their competition. If you're serious about wanting to develop your skills, to be able to present your thoughts, your ideas, and yourself with clarity and confidence, to be able to speak, to influence and impact, and to communicate like a confident and charismatic leader, then this course is for you. Go on to kevinabderrahman.org forward slash course and get started today. What you said about language is really interesting, but I'm thinking, I'll be honest, I, you know, earlier I mentioned about wanting to learn bachata, mm -hmm. and uh, I just haven't done it yet. It's on my goal list, just like spe speaking Spanish. Do it. And now I'm putting it on video and podcast, so I'm really having to yes. honor my goal list. <laughs> But one of the things that holds me back from, say, going to bachata is because I dance urban kiss. And I'm you, you do what? Urban kiss. What's Ur that? Urban kizomba. So in the sensual Latin dance, there is salsa, there's bachata. Uh, there's a dance that originated from Angola and then kind of took a world of its own and expanded into what is urban kizomba. I do that. Urban kizomba? I'm yeah. Google that oh, today. Yeah, so it's kizomba, but there's a... There's a um, Within that, there's like a subcategory, urban kids. I don't know. I just dance this thing. I'm That's like, so cool. Kevin, that I didn't know about Kevin, you. Kevin twerking on Cam. <laughs> Kevin is not twerking on Cam at all. So I do that, but you know that process took a while. Like it took 14 months for me to be happy with the level that I was. And okay. now I've been doing it for a few years, and I can easily say that you know I'm at a pretty good level. And being critical, I'll only say that if I hit a certain stage and. I feel good about it. Okay. I love when I see bachata. I was in Spain, and every time I go to Barcelona, if I go to the club, I go, like, oh, wow, beautiful guys and beautiful girls, and they're dancing, and the energy and the magic. I'm like, oh, man, it feels, this looks so good. I want to do it. And then I don't do it because I don't want to go through being terrible. Yes. Of the stage of starting from the beginning, oh. not knowing how to move my feet, not knowing how to move my hands, being terrible, and then, if I'm really honest, the early phases is embarrassing. Why? And I said all that because I want to ask you, when you were learning Italian, I know it holds a lot of people back. They don't try it or they don't speak because of that feeling of embarrassment. But embarrassed because of what? I don't know. It's, we're, we're concerned about how we look in front of others. Mm. This is a reality of the situation. That's true. But we need to unlearn that. Go on. I think we need to unlearn that because kids don't have that. It's true. You know, kids uh, walk and they fall and they get up and they walk again and then they fall and then they get up and they walk again. If an adult falls, the first thing that goes through his, through his mind is, oh my God, how embarrassing. They don't even ask, how painful was that? It was just like, oh God, I hope no one saw me, right? Mm. And I think, and that applies, I really think that applies to everything. Because the reason uh, when you when, think about your learning process when you were a kid and you were learning how to do math or reading the, 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 the time or writing, uh, how many kids uh, struggle a little bit with the, with the P? Where do they put the, 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 the that circular circle, thing? Right? You know, and, and we're, we're not talking about learning difficulties, we're just saying when you're learning. It's just, you know, it takes a while for you to remember that the P goes that way. And, you know, just, and I think we, we well, I don't know when it happens that we started becoming very concerned and self-conscious about things. But uh, there's nothing, absolutely zero embarrassing about making mistakes mm -hmm. when you're learning a new language. Because you are doing a lot more than the person who is not doing the same yeah <laughs> so on the contrary i think it's it could inspire other people yes to to go through the struggle i used to enjoy uh learning uh, you know making mistakes and and learning from my mistakes because it was like puzzles it was to me it was like a big jigsaw puzzle that i just put in the piece and look wrong piece wrong piece mm. and then yes i got the right piece it's the same thing it's the that's process a, that's a great perspective and it's it's fine. Um, people, if people laugh, that's their problem. And sometimes I laugh at my own mistakes. Yes. I mean, you just have to be able to do that. 
I think it really, if you're able to laugh at yourself, when I was doing comedy, and maybe you remember this, a lot of my jokes were about myself. And if you learn how to uh, laugh at yourself, then that will just apply. Life becomes a lot more smoother. It's easier. Just who cares about people laughing? Someone be like, oh, like, and I've seen that. It's, it's, such, it's such an unfortunate thing because uh, I feel that people would stop because of how others think of them. And they won't even start. And, or they won't even start. But sometimes I've seen, for example, especially with Arabic. Let's just take Arabic as an example. Forget Italian. Italians, by the way, Italians, just to close that, Italians are extremely supportive, supportive of me when I was learning Italian. And my friends, they would correct me. I would ask them to correct me and not to just kind of understand what I'm saying. Yes. And let it, no, please correct me because I wanted to learn. Uh, and I must admit that I've been to Italy a number of times, and just the fact, I mean, generally when I'm there, I'll ask to know a couple of words, and then I just won't, I forget it all. But when I've tried it, where I go, when I walk into a cafe and I go, ciao, with a couple of words, they're, all, they're just, it's like, you know, it just melts the yeah, ice immediately. They love it. They just the fact that you're it. trying. Absolutely, and that is and that is something that I've learned. Like if I just say a few words, they're like they're excited. They want to tell me more. I mean, when I go there, I have full-on conversations. But just in general, they love the fact that you're trying to learn your language, and uh, they're very warm people. So they want to talk to you, uh, and they want to discuss things with you. And you know, suddenly we're talking about the Nile and Shang Shen, and you know, they just want to they want to know more. Um, so don't be embarrassed. Don't be embarrassed. Now, in, in, when you're, Get on with I've noticed this like for my friends who learn Arabic because uh, sometimes when people learn Arabic, they learn standard Arabic or the classical Arabic, Yes. like the uh, written Arabic. And that is not the Arabic that we used to speak, obviously. Um, and there are many dialects in Arabic. So there's Egyptian, there is the Marathi or the Khaliji, there is the Lebanese or the Levant kind of uh, dialects. Um, and so, it happens that you know people who learn the classical Arabic sometimes they would go to the grocery store and they would ask for things using classical Arabic. Now, it's unfortunate that some people would laugh because they would be like, "Oh, he sounds like a cartoon, right?" And they would be like, "Oh, that's not how we say it." And fine, even if they laugh, what what is also unfortunate is that some people would allow that to get to them. Yes. And demotivate them. And just be like, oh, it's easier just to say, oh, sorry, I'm still learning Arabic. I can only say hubs. Yes. Khalas. You know, which means bread. Um, I can only say this, and I don't know how to say it, you know. Maybe learn how to say that in classical Arabic. Yeah. And say, I'm still learning. And, uh, you know, someday, inshallah, I'll be able to speak. But that, just, just that perspective just of that know puzzle, how to say that in this one. yeah. But the puzzle of what the content, you know, the perspective of the puzzle is fantastic. Yeah. To not be so hard on yourself and just to go, hey, here's a piece of the puzzle. Whoops, that doesn't work. Yeah. Let me just get another one. And then, That's and fantastic. then it would fit. Yeah. There is one unless you lost it. There is. <laughs> or you didn't buy it. Or you didn't buy it. <laughs> or it's a manufacturing thing. No, but usually the piece is there. Yeah. You just haven't found it yet. And this process, it's a lot more fun. It's it's enjoy enjoy the climb yeah. in the in the wise words of of Miley Cyrus. Is mm. that what she says? In, it's the climb. Thank you, Miley. It's the climb. There's a song. Okay, yeah. There's, we insert song. <laughs> Get inspired. You know this by now that we are the number one YouTube show slash podcast that's coming out of the Middle East from Dubai. If you like the idea of having your brand reach at least a million eyeballs per episode, then feel free to reach out to my office on kevinabdurrahman.org. Without further delay, let's continue this great conversation. You wanted water. I did, I did. When I asked you the question of <laughs> who do you get advice from? Ah, uh, yeah. Mom, I think. Um, that's a very general question because it depends on who's like I would get makeup advice from a makeup artist. Okay. You know, I mean, I would get advice. Life advice is usually comes from my mom. Okay. <laughs> mom, what do you think? Um, but uh, different kinds of advice come from different people in my life because of their their specialities. Sure. 
Um, and are you the kind of person who seeks advice because there are some people who don't? They just formulate their thoughts in their head and they just go for it. Or do you go seeking for advice and then as a result of the conversations you formulate your thoughts? Uh, I'm not stubborn. Okay. But I always like to keep an open mind to possibilities. Sure. Okay, so sometimes I do know what I want, but just in case I want to explore possibilities, I would ask people. Mm -hmm. uh, I do believe that uh, you know life is, is, a, is a long learning process. It's not you you're never born knowing everything, right? So you need to always ask and and uh, and pick people's brain around you, and especially if I know that someone. Uh, has done something yes. that I'd be like, oh, so what do? You, what was your experience like, and and so on. Um, but and that's to gain perspective, right? Yeah, because we only have. We might be looking at it learn. through the lens in yeah. a certain in a certain way. Exactly. But have you ever, for example, uh, believed reviews for a movie and then went to the movie and said, I don't know what they're talking about. This yes. is great. All the time. Right. Yeah. And so it's the same thing. These are people giving you advice online, right? It's, so it's the same thing. Sometimes. What we, need, what we need to understand is that people's advice comes from their own personal experiences and how they themselves related to situations. Yes. And so, and we're not the same. And so maybe my experience would be different. But I would still ask because I want to see another perspective. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. And because it works for them, it doesn't necessarily mean that it works for you. Exactly. But to hear it is good because then you can process it and you choose what to take from it. Exactly. Exactly. And. Uh, and that's just the way I've, I've always been. You know, I've always just uh, liked to hear what people say. And uh, again, mom might say that I'm a little bit stubborn, <laughs> but but it seems know. like you follow your heart. I just follow my heart. I just like yeah, exactly. I just want to like I do what I what I what I enjoy doing. And um, you know, I, I think that um, sometimes general wisdom may not agree with me. Sure. That's why it's general, it's not for you. Yeah, and so sometimes people will ask me about, you know, shouldn't I be doing this by now? Shouldn't I be doing that by now? You know, I don't know. I don't, I don't think it really applies. Because you touched on dabbling and trying out different things, what about the concern of comparing? Let's say, I don't believe you still, that you are 43, that you, you don't look it. Um, I'm 39. You, are you going to ID me? Should I pull up my ID? Well, we'll bring in your Emirates ID card. <laughs> and check. It's an inherent thing where, again, because we, work, we we don't live alone, we live in society. And then there is how society and how we see our friends do things. There have been times in my life where I've looked at friends, I've looked at others who inspire me, and I'm going, did I do things wrong in my life? Mm -hmm. And I'm sure this is a challenge. I don't know if you face it, but plenty of people face it. What are your thoughts on, on this aspect? Especially as you get older, and if you're not going with the same flow or in the same direction as everybody else, yeah. you kind of can stand out like a sore thumb. <laughs> I mean, I was in Jordan just recently, and the guy goes, how old are you? It seems to be the first question, even <laughs> before your name. I'm like, I'm 39. Married? No. Guess what he follows it up with? What's wrong? What's wrong? Yeah. How old are you? Married? No. What's wrong? At least, what? At, least happy. He, at least he asked it. Some people would Just assume, think it. Right. <laughs> I'm sure most people think it. <laughs> some What's people, wrong with me? Some with this people kid? wouldn't even tell me like you know, they'd be like, oh. it'd be like in their eyes. Like, oh the sympathy. Poor her. <laughs> um so I go. I'm an actor, you're an actor, I'm an actor. <laughs> no, okay, let me, let me. Um, I mean, you can take it in any direction. I'm yeah, sure I'm thinking of how to answer that. Um, so this is the thing. I don't believe there's a blueprint for life mm -hmm. or how life should be lived. I think that, um, oh God, it's going to sound cliche it's gonna sound like one of those memes right but I, I actually do believe it it's it's everyone's individual journey yeah. right and so no two people can have the same story um, nor should they 
nor should they. And even if it looks like it's the same story, because sometimes you'd be like, no, it's a lot of people have the same story. But no, each story has its own specificity. That's right. If you speak to them, yes. you'll notice that yes. there's a difference. So yes, I, but I, having said that, I also sometimes fall into the trap of comparing myself uh, and saying, maybe, maybe I didn't live life correctly. Maybe I should, should have gotten married and should have had children of my own. Um, it is something that is, um, yeah, I still believe I can get married. I mean, the marriage thing is, uh, you can get married at any age, right? right. It's not, there's no limitation to when you can get well, married. But, you know, generally but in the, society... But it's raising the family and having the children part, which is, I mean, the older I get, the less... Uh, possible it looks um and so and that's just pure this is where age comes in sure. okay and it's just pure like biology let's just say um and so yeah i don't have kids of my own you know is that is that something that uh, uh you know what's wrong why didn't i why didn't i go down the route where everyone else, where it, everyone yes. else did and I didn't make a choice not to, but it just didn't happen. Yes. And I and I just and I really am a believer in that. I mm -hmm. believe that if it didn't happen, it wasn't meant to happen, and that uh, I I've not wasted my life. Not at all. Uh, waiting, and that's this is the this is the problem. Uh -huh. If you waste your time in your life just waiting for for the ideal uh, life, or waiting to to accomplish something, which is not necessarily even your path. You're just assuming. Yeah, it's it's the path that is the norm. Yes, <laughs> you know, and it's. I mean, imagine if you just sat around, not doing anything, waiting. Just for just waiting right for whatever. The, yeah. <laughs> the right guy. I don't know. I did. I didn't do. It. I chose not to live my life like that. Mm. I chose to. Um, to. I'm not. I'm not anti-marriage. I'm not anti-family, but it didn't happen. And so, in the process, I did other things. I'm gonna live my life. I did other things, yeah. and uh, and that's that. And this is it. This is this is exactly what um, what I chose to do. The comparing, yes. The comparing happens because it's natural that you compare and you compare yourself. But then, and then I, but I, then I remember, I remind myself there is no blueprint. Yes. There is, what are you doing comparing yourself to others? Yes. Don't do that because I've noticed that you know this that the grass is always greener. Yes. It's also true. Like a lot of my fa my friends who with family and with kids, they don't have the time. To, to do all the different artsy things that I do. That's right. I wish I had the, ten, the time Lamia has to yeah, do a I play. Yeah, I wish, oh, of course you'd do that because you have no kids. You know, at the same time, there are others with, uh, with, uh, with children who are also able to do yes. it because they've arranged their lives differently. Yes. Or they have other uh, support systems sure. available to them. And, and so that's what I'm saying. So even within married life people are different what you said is absolutely true in terms of reminding yourself you know this is not something that someone else can do for you you need to constantly remind yourself yeah, there yeah. is no blueprint like and even if the grass looks greener on the other side i mean when it's ever happened to me which is very infrequent i quickly remind myself kev you're living this life by choice and you're happy, or or maybe not by choice, but it's just it's it's what it is. It is what it is, and, and, this and is you the have path. other blessings. Yes, you know you have other blessings, and that's and that's something that we always forget to do, Kevin. I think we always forget to count our blessings. Yes, we always forget to say what I, what is it that I. We always remember what we don't have, but we never remember what we have, and right. it's and it's well, it's unfortunate. It's it's really unfortunate because. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that may be missing in my life, but there are other things that um, that enriches yes. my life. You know, and I also believe that when God takes away something and gives us something else instead, 
that would give you maybe similar happiness. Yes. That's something that I believe in. And so even if I don't have children of my own, he made me a storyteller. So I get to entertain the kids and tell them stories, and then someone else feeds them and puts them to bed. <laughs> you know? and, and it seems like, I, from, from, correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems like you prefer kids over adults. I do. I love kids so much. I was at, actually, I was, at, I was at a friend's house yesterday, and um, uh, her little kid was doing his homework, and he was doing math, and I got really excited. I was like, you're doing math! And he, I was like, I was like, that's like my favorite subject. And he looks at me, he's like, me too. And I was like, that's so cool. And then I was like, can I see? And I, and I started like doing his math problems with him. And then I was like, I, I can do this in my head, I said. You know, wow. like my, and he's like, no. I was like, yes. And he's like, how did you do that? I was like, yeah. <laughs> and we just like had a, this, like a boss. We just had this conversation. And then he, and then he looks at me, he's like, Auntie Lamia, do you miss school? And I said, yeah, how did you know? He's like, I can tell from your eyes. Oh, <laughs> I was like, oh! So cute. Super cute. But I do, I do enjoy hanging out with kids a lot. So then I have to rephrase my question, which is, apart from the kids in your life, <laughs> what are you grateful for? I'm very grateful for, oh God, where do I begin? Like it's, I'm, I'm grateful for my health. I'm grateful for uh, the friends and the people around me uh, who support me. I'm grateful that um, that sometimes people like me for no reason. Yes, and there is a reason, but you think it's no reason. I mean, but the, but it's just like I haven't we haven't even like there is that, and this is a blessing that I had nothing to do with. I believe that sometimes God just gives you. Uh, these moments of happiness yes. without, you know, you don't have to work for it. I'm grateful for the being having the, the wisdom to to follow my passion. Yes. And, oh, well uh, said. Well and said. to not allow myself to be limited, um, you know, by people's ideas or of, of of my own preconceived ideas of how I should have lived my life. Mm. Um, I am grateful for Google. I'm grateful for it. helped with my mean, McIntyre, didn't it? It did. And she's like, there's this comedian. You, you got to check him out. What's his name? Google. I know. <laughs> and suddenly, I suddenly <laughs> blanked out, even though he's like my favorite comedian. But I do it all it's the time. like, it's, yeah. I'm also aging. Fast. And I'm grateful for it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm grateful for that. I mean, I brought it up because you said we have to remind ourselves. Yeah. To be grateful because it is just natural to think of what you don't have. Yeah. And we're all guilty of it. Yeah, but there's so many things that you have. I mean, I'm grateful that I have a fantastic relationship with my mother. Yeah. I mean, and that is something, it sounds like so dull, but no, no. There are many people around me who do not have good relationships with their mothers. And it breaks... Who do not have mothers. Or who do not have mothers yeah. to begin with. And it breaks my heart because mm -hmm. it's like, you know, or, or if their mothers are around, they they have a very uh, difficult relationship yes. with them. And it, it, just breaks my heart because I'm like, oh, you know, like it's such a beautiful thing, and I'm grateful that I have that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm grateful, you know, to to be uh, for all the education that I've received, and you know that my parents were able to support me in a large part of my education, uh, and that I was able to support myself in the remaining part, and you know the fact that I learned, you know. A language that I love and that I'm able to now enjoy their movies and their their music and their language. I'm grateful for. It's a shame you don't drink their espresso. I, I do drink. Oh, it you too. do drink. I do drink okay, espresso. I just saw you order tea and you're like, I'm oh so yeah, Egyptian. tea. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, I do drink. <laughs> How can you miss on the Italian espresso? Because I don't even know how to do that, it properly. That place where we got the it's called That's like not, Italian. Oh, oh, oh and you're like this now. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. oh, mommy. So you're a storyteller, and you do it at events, you do it at schools, you do it at um, exhibitions, and you do it at the Abu Dhabi Louvre. I do, I do, I do. I do Quite that a range. Well. Yeah, I tell stories wherever people want to... Hear stories. <laughs> yeah, when they hire me to tell stories, yeah. 
A professional storyteller. It's one of the things that I do, yeah. I'm yeah, but a performing artist in general. Okay. So I do acting and I do storytelling. So like at the, at the Abu Dhabi Louvre, can you run me through what you do just so I can get a picture of it? So I mean, I just see you turning up and just telling stories like, what's up everyone? Yeah, they, uh, they, they sometimes commission me to tell stories there um, by... Basically they tell me that, okay, so we have this weekend where we have an exhibition because they have these ongoing exhibitions sure. that change. Yes. So, for example, these are there are all these photographs. Uh, you know, come take a look, see what inspires you, and then write an original story. Lovely. So they're they're more interested in original stories. Okay. Uh, not necessarily historically accurate stories. Sure, but context. You know, related to that to, exhibition. To that exhibition, sure. that idea. So I do that. So sometimes when I'm so sometimes I'm asked to write stories in different. Uh, you know, venues and um, and occasions, yes. uh, based on uh, their specific requirements. Sure. So sometimes I'm asked uh, during Ramadan, for example, oh, can you please come and tell us stories about Ramadan? So okay, and sometimes it's just you just want to hire a storyteller. You know, just whatever, come with whatever, whatever stories you do. Come with your stories. Come with your stories. <laughs> uh, sometimes uh, they they ask me, you know, to do like. If it's a store, for example, they'd be like, oh, can you come tell stories? I can come use our things. So I, in my story, wow. I have to use their stuff. Okay, okay. cool. Thing, you know. And of all the kind of ways that you deliver the stories, do you have a favorite? I just prefer to tell like stories from my own repertoire okay. that, uh, you know, that kids will engage with. Yes. And, um, and so yeah, it's uh, it's fun. I think I think in any uh, actually sometimes they even ask me to read. Okay. And even though it's not my favorite kind of storytelling, it's fine. Book reading is fine, but it's not. I, I find it it's like it kind of it paralyzes most of my body <laughs> because you're only just using one. Because aspect. exactly, because I'm like turning pages, and sometimes people want that. They want because they want kids to. The idea is that they want kids to appreciate books yes. and to be able to pick up their own book. And yes. So I get that too. Uh, the performer inside me resists it because I want to be out there and going, yeah, you know, like I'm just, I'm using my whole body. Yes. But then I get the education part of it. So so I sit on the chair and I, I read the story. And you've got a great voice. So I, I can you. see why. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, I do. I enjoy it. I do I enjoy doing the voices and the line. And the kids love it. I think this is where I'm going to ask you the question of what question have you not been asked to date? <laughs> Note, executives at the upcoming company. Yeah, that was funny when you asked me that. Um, so uh, no one has ever come up to me and say, hey, Lamia, the, wait, what, what did I say? So the, the question I asked you was, mm -hmm. uh, would you share with me a question that you've never been asked but would you would like to be asked? Yes, and my answer was cheeky, <laughs> cheeky, but real. I said no one's ever come up to me and said, "Hey, Lamia, I work at Disney," or I said, "Insert name of any uh, production company sure. here." <laughs> We're doing this movie, and we'd love for you to come and do the voices for it. Would you be interested to? this uh, character no one's ever said that to me so Disney Marvel <laughs> the 99 group you know they're right there the yeah. superhero group anyone any production company me. this is the voice man I would love 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 to um, to do voices for animations I think and it'll, it'll be unlike reading because you can get into it yeah but it's it'll great yeah. but it's absolutely it's amazing because you uh, I don't know it's just great <laughs> I think I'd really enjoy that so, uh, so yeah, I'm waiting for someone to come. To come. Um, You've also hosted at the Emirates Literature Festival. Yeah. Right. So how was uh, that experience? And that was amazing. Uh, at the at the at the Lit Fest, I um, this was Lit last Fest. year. Yeah, <laughs> Emirates Lit Fest. It was last year, and uh, Jeff Kinney uh, was there. Mm -hmm. uh, the have you uh, read Diary, I know of the name, but I haven't Diary read. of a Wimpy Kid? No. Okay. Amazing! And Diary of a, of a Wimpy Kid. Of a Wimpy Kid. We'll, we'll make sure that anything that's mentioned, yeah. We'll, yeah. we'll put the links 
yeah um, on the show notes and also below the video the diary of the it's like it's like a it's super duper like famous around the world and uh he was wait the, i've like, seen it in borders. borders yeah, no, yeah i've yeah. seen it i've seen it on borders yes i have seen it but i haven't read it yeah I just walked past it going <laughs> to the starbucks you owe me starbucks for this one <laughs> <laughs> for the free free name drop yeah but um, yeah, I walked in. I have seen it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's like looking huge. for books for Korean. I have seen this one. Yeah. Huge! It's huge, huge, huge. And the writer uh, came to the book fest last year. Um, well, this year. This we're still twenty nineteen. Yeah, this year. And um, and they asked me if I could like you know host his uh, this session, session with him, yeah. with the schools and all that. And it was so much fun. He was like a he was treated like a pop star. Like seriously, the kids loved the books. They're they're passionate about the books, and they they're passionate. They were so passionate to meet him, and and it was it was a ball, and it was great working with, with Jeff as well. It was uh, it was so much fun. So uh, so I did that. I also host um, and moderate sessions at uh, the Sharjah Book Fair right. and the Sharjah Children's Reading Festival. Um, I MC events sometimes, and so d different different hats, obviously. Yes, but doing, the same skill set. The same skill set, as in, I mean, so, certain things you need to to uh, to um, prepare more in depth uh, kind of questions. Sure. With the, if you're moderating a panel, for mm -hmm. example, there's a lot more um, work that goes into that, of course, because you need to understand the subject, uh, know who your the speakers are. Sure. You know, more about what they've written and to come up with intelligent questions because uh, when you were moderating a panel do you have a memorable moment or you know that, that maybe you didn't expect from anyone that you know that was on stage perhaps it was an aha moment or something they shared that made you think oh that's a good one you know it's a good thought um, I mean, i've had a few with you right now um, or even at the exhibition uh, when you're hosting or moderating, have you ever had that kind of interaction with someone? You while really... moderating, no, I haven't had that while I'm moderating, but I've had, I've had a, a one of the at, at at one of the sessions that I was once hosting. Um, I like to I like to contact them in advance. Okay. So I like to get their emails and to send them like an introduction about who I am and to ask them what they're planning to talk about, etc. And I remember one guy said, wow, you really like taking this very seriously. No one has ever done that. No, they don't. <laughs> I've been on a lot of, you know, panels and events and speaking. I've never had anyone send me an email. So yeah, you are different because I tend to arrive and five minutes before that or 10 minutes, if they're really super duper an hour or two before that, they're like, oh, so we're thinking, what are you going to say? Because we're thinking of saying this and adjust accordingly. But yeah, yeah your email would have stood out. That I mean, I feel like it's it's ABC. If I were in a panel, I would expect like when you sent me your email, that was wow. It's not just hey, let's meet for a podcast. Uh, you know, let's 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 film. No, yes. it was more of a okay. It was very detailed. This is what we're, this is what I plan to do. I need this much time from you. Uninterrupted, he said. <laughs> We, really, we live in the Middle I've, East. I've been really good at that. Um, and I, I need this, 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 the questions that I want. It was very detailed and very, very thorough. And I think preparation is key. Yes, 100%. To, for success. Absolutely. I mean, I even teach this, you know, I work with CEOs on their public speaking. Mm -hmm. And when we're working and I ask them who inspires them in terms of a communicator or a leader, and they'll make a mention. Every single one person, whoever they mention, any country, any culture, any position, any field, guaranteed they've put in the work because yeah. there is a certain level of confidence that comes. If you want good quality, if that's what your intention is, and my intention with the podcast or having you as a guest or anybody on the guest is to give them the respect and um, you know the, the time, but also what we create, yeah. something that's truly reflective and deserving of it. That's why I decided to create this, Absolutely. not for a point of difference of, having a million dollar studio or 10 people working on this, our point of difference was going to just be the, the guests will be able to shine at their very best. Exactly. My and that, role, that is key. Yeah, yes. and my role is an enabler. And the only way I can yeah. do that is I, I have to prepare. 
but common sense doesn't seem to be common practice. I think so. I think I also think that there's uh, there's something about um, when you are so well prepared, you allow yourself to have a comfortable conversation. Yes. Because you're not you're not taken by surprise. Yes. You're not. Uh, you don't come across. You give the interviewee confidence yes. that you know the material and that you know what they're talking about, and that you there is this, uh, there is a, a mutual kind of uh, that you respect them enough yes. to do the research on them. Absolutely, and that's it, and, yeah. and that you take your your job seriously, uh, and it also allows you to be more in control. Yeah. as well, you know. And what I've found, I mean, we've done now quite a few interviews, but what I've also found is. It rarely goes according to my preparation. So the yeah. preparation just gives a really nice confidence foundation. Yeah, just in case. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then we just go naturally based on you know wherever the you know the, the conversation goes. Absolutely. I, I used to do a radio show and uh, it was a weekly show and I would prepare. I had a topic. I would get the guests to talk about this particular topic. I had all my questions ready for them, and then while we we're in the conversation, many many times. Uh, it would just change. Yes, things would change because I wouldn't be. Um, I wouldn't. The conversation would take us somewhere. They would speak about a certain topic that I never thought about. Yes, and uh, but in case they didn't do that, I always had my questions. Yes, I always had my questions ready for me to go back to. Yes, so, so you know, preparation uh, brings preparation. confidence. Breeds confidence. It makes you look better. Yes. You know, yes. because then you're not like, oh God, he's not even ready. Like, you know, can, who brought this moderator on stage? Uh, and we see that a lot. And so, to this very day, exactly. You see it anywhere in the world. I see it. And sometimes moderators do shine. Yes. By the way. Yes. I mean, moderator. It's not just. It's not a. It's not just about who's on the panel. Yes. But it's how you moderate the session and. The kind of questions that you bring to the table, and your 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 ability to also uh, yes, you're allowing speakers time to speak, but at the same time, how you can eloquently and diplomatically cut them <laughs> and say, you know, how we're about gonna, how about we move? Yeah, we're going to come back to them. How about we move on to this person now? You know? Yes. Have you ever been frustrated? Yeah, of course. Can you so take us to a time where perhaps you felt you know frustrated, and maybe your thinking process, and you know how do you deal with frustrations? Because we all kind of mm. have it in different aspects of our lives. Let me think. But it's so easy for someone to just look at you from the outside and go, oh, "She has it all figured out." <laughs> <laughs> Disney, you better call her. Oh God, I know. <laughs> figured out. Nope, I don't have anything figured out. <laughs> yes, of course I get frustrated. Um, I think uh, one of the things that really frustrates me is incompetence. When I find that people are in a position where they should be doing certain things a certain way and it's not happening and it just <laughs> yeah or being a professional or something it just makes me feel extremely frustrated and, uh, and then I try to lower my expectations sure. lower the expectations to but, zero but they're like literally like on the floor now <laughs> like, yeah. where do I go um, sometimes not often, but something that, that frustrates me. Sure. You know why it it's frustrates me? It's a reality we face. Because it frustrates me because you put in your best and you really try your best to do something. And I'm not a perfectionist, but I really try to to do good, to do well. Yes. Uh, of course, I make mistakes. Sure. We all do. Sure. But uh, not they're not intentional, and they're not mistakes out of or lack of preparation or lack of preparation. Or, yeah. or I try to. I mean, having said that, I always let me let me tell you something. Having said that, I always try to uh, put in put things in perspective. Mm -hmm. So sometimes when things happen and you know people are incompetent or they're not doing, you know, I don't know why, but incompetence really like. Oh no, really, I feel you, girl. Yeah. It really grates on my nose. Yeah, oh, no, 
But also, I sometimes think, okay, but maybe they're, and then I look at, I try to give excuses. I'm like, okay, maybe they're young. Maybe they're, um, they just graduated, poor things. When I graduated, I would have probably made the same mistakes. Probably true. Mm -hmm. um, and so I also put things in perspective. Sure. Just, and that helps me deal with it. Yes. It helps me deal with it. That's one aspect, but on the aspect of getting frustrated with incompetence is if they talk a big talk or if they're in a place of position where that there's a certain level of competence that is expected of you when you're in that position. That's really frustrating. Yeah. That's true. Sometimes. And unfortunately, it's often it's in this yeah. category, not yeah. the category of a, oh, maybe when I was when younger, I was like this, or yeah. when I was a beginner. Like, for example, I dance with beginners who, you know, who yeah. do urban kids, and it's absolutely not an issue. Yeah, it's. I think it's just a matter of, I mean, you can't, I, I, I've reached a point where I realized that I can't change the world. Sure. And um, and being a freelancer means that I deal with different kinds of people on a daily basis. Right. So uh, maybe if I was working in one place and there was this one incompetent person, person. that I have to deal with every day, then I would go crazy. Uh, but it's because, of, yeah. It's okay. It's, I only have to deal with this person for like, for this project. For this project, and we're moving on. But our, uh, our circles will never collide okay. again. <laughs> Maybe they will, but I've never forgotten about this. Um, I usually try to uh, to do my bit by uh, telling people nicely and non-offensively how I think maybe doing things differently could help them. Okay. <laughs> I try to make it like suggestions and sure. because even if I got frustrated by a certain situation, maybe there's a chance that I could avoid other people being frustrated sure. by the same incompetent behavior. <laughs> yes. So but it's good that you're willing to do that because that also requires courage. I was having a conversation uh, with a friend a few days ago and um, Something came up where would you tell this person if this was the situation? Like there's something that is not good or not right. Yeah. Would you tell them? I'd be like, no, just let it be. It's not my thing. No. But, and then she said, well, that, when she used a, a different word, but which was the opposite of courage. Right? Because it takes courage to be willing to, because she goes, oh, you're just trying to be nice by not saying it. Because you're worried that they're going to think, oh, you're a mean person. They get offended. Well, that's the thing. Key is to say it in a way where the key is to say it in a, in a method, <laughs> in a style that doesn't make them feel affected. But there are some things that, regardless of how nice you say, they will be offended. They will be offended. Well, that's too bad. Because sometimes I say it because I try. I really try to sugarcoat and to pat it. Mm -hmm. To give it a soft landing, sure. you know, but sometimes, but they need to know it. Yes, they need to know it because I can't. I can't live with myself if they don't. If I don't tell them what I think, yeah, I wouldn't be able to live with myself. But I take a different approach. I'm like, oh well, moving on. Yeah, well, you know, your incompetence is your problem, and it's not my place to say it. So yeah, continue. Hopefully, the next person will say something <laughs> to you. <laughs> I know. Maybe, maybe that's not. I don't think it's. I don't think it's not being brave, though. I don't think it's. Um, well, it's just because I. I my, what my friend said was, yeah, you're too. You've got a nice image, and you you don't want to tell them because you're afraid that it's going to ruin your nice image. The nice, image. The nice guy, because by yeah. saying this, you're no longer the nice guy, even though you're trying to be helpful to them. But you're not. You're no longer the nice guy, and I'm like, yeah, that sounds about right. But you know what? I like that with friends. Okay. That's probably why I don't have friends because. Um, but I'm like that with friends. Okay. Like I would not necessarily tell my friends friends things because I would feel that you know I wouldn't want them to. Um, I don't know why I wouldn't say that, but I feel like if I say it to a stranger, then that stranger maybe never has to deal with me again, and uh, and if they hate me for what I say, then. Maybe they'll hate me now, but then later Thank on, you at some point. they'll think about it, and then. Do it. But I, and so, and it's for me, it's a low risk relationship. Yes. Because I'm not risking never talking. You know, it's fine. It's I just have to tell you this, and um, 
but then with friends, maybe some friends will deal with it that way. Sure. You know, that, oh, I can't believe you say that to me. You know, like, I thought you were my friend. I you were my friend. <laughs> so I would, yeah. To be able to lead the life you lead, where you can pursue your passion, it comes at a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. What sacrifices have you made? Or can you give us an example of a decision you made in terms of pursuing perhaps storytelling? But in order to be able to do that, you had to make a sacrifice. Uh, not a sacrifice to do storytelling, but I, but I would say just in general, I think maybe I mentioned it earlier that when I was working full time, um, it was uh, my hours were very limited because uh, this was know, a corporate job. It was a corporate job, and I had full time hours, and most of the day I, I would today we're sitting here today doing this interview in the middle of a working day. That's right. Other people are around us are in their offices. That's right. But we're able to do this here because we're freelancers, right? And mm -hmm. so when you're a freelancer, your day is more flexible and you're able to do different kinds of things as well. Sure. So sometimes people would ask me, would you be interested in doing this or that? And I'd be like, oh, I'm sorry, because I'm working. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be able to put in the time to, you know, to, to take that. on an artistic project. So the sacrifice would be, like I said, like I mentioned earlier, uh, of course, that comes with a, with a big price tag, which is financial stability. Sure. I no longer have that uh, regular incoming uh, salary into my bank account. Which is so nice to have. Which is oh, so amazing. You yeah. Get that, you, know, you get that message at the end of the month, ding, 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 and you'd be like, oh. Reloaded. Look at me. <laughs> so rich. Or I'll be traveling soon. Yeah, I don't have that anymore. Right. I'll be like, okay, great. Okay, so that person sent me the check, or that person, you know, it's more difficult now. But that's a sacrifice that I did. Uh, but the sacrifice is worth it because you're pursuing what your heart tells you. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, because I love, I love what I, I love what I do, and. Um, yeah, I love what I do, and so for me to sacrifice that was uh, was a choice that I made. Yeah, I apologize. You were going to mention another. The one. other one was, uh, I would think, uh, sometimes you sacrifice uh, time, mm -hmm. uh, sleep, rest, a lot of times. Like I was just uh, telling you uh, when we were off camera that uh, this is a period where. It's, it's quite busy for me because I'm doing many things uh, which require long hours. Yes. And so I'm not sleeping as much mm -hmm. as I should be sleeping. Um, you know, I had that rosy image of a freelancer before becoming a freelancer. What was it? Oh my tell God. us the rosy image and then okay. tell us reality. So when I was good. <laughs> oh dear. I was like, I'm going to be one of those people with my laptop, sitting at... Fancy Cafe, yeah, vegan. I almost said the name of the cafe there too. At, you know what, and working there with my laptop. But but no, not before, in the morning, I would first go to the pool and oh, I would yeah. swim. Because I can. That's the Instagram life. Because <laughs> I can. I haven't seen my pool. <laughs> so I became a real I think I know where it is in the building. Yeah, it's very fancy. Like, oh, Rosie and real are very different. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, okay. Yeah, none of that's happening. So, um, so yeah, it's 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 very hard. But also, like uh, like I said, you know, you sacrifice time, you rest. Sometimes, you know, uh, unfortunately, sometimes. I sacrifice uh, my social relationships and outings and, mm. and catching up. Like I've got friends who are about to unfriend me, Kevin. Please don't unfriend me. Please be my friends. Like people who are like literally about to drop me like hot coal because yeah. um, because they don't see enough of me. Um, I get invited to things and I say I can't and it's. And bless their heart, they still invite me. Oh wow, my friends have just just stopped. Just stopped yeah, yeah. I, just, I just don't get yes, invitations I mean, anymore. And okay, so Kevin didn't give up on me. 
<laughs> to do this podcast. He's like, can you? So the last message he sent Gentle me. Gentle reminder. Last message he sent me a couple of days ago was like, hi. And I didn't even say hi. I was like, do you hate me? Is my, was my question. It was. <laughs> do you hate me? And he's like, no, I don't. That's why I'm getting in touch again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> No, I get it. Yeah, and the thing is, the, pe the people that matter will always get it. Yeah, the, the people that really yeah. matter will get it because they know that, hey, whatever you're yeah. pursuing requires sacrifice. It's just the reality of it. And yeah, and that is, that is actually true because other people are like, okay, we get it. Whenever you're free, just give us a buzz or like, you know, like, let's work it out. And, and likewise, I don't expect them to drop their lives. Yeah, because I was going to say, because if they're also reciprocal. pursuing something that's important for them, yeah. they also don't have the exactly. time. Exactly, it's reciprocal. We, we only have 24 hours. Yeah, yeah. Anyone that's doing anything worthwhile for themselves, they're, they have to prioritize their time. Absolutely, it's definitely reciprocal, and it's and it's all like I've had friends that during exam time I don't see them, I don't see them during exam time because it's like, you know, they're studying with their kids at home and they're busy and um, and it's it's fine though. It, it it is a problem when 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 there's absolutely zero effort that's being done. Like when someone really doesn't care at all about connecting with you, then it's a then yeah then that's different. Mm -hmm. But but if but if people are genuinely like busy and they're like they can't or they need maybe they need time maybe they're not busy but they just need time to me time or whatever yeah you know, that's that's Sometimes that's that's legit yes. that's legit you know you so, just gotta communicate it so just yeah just uh, just connect and just say you know and believe it when other people say that they're busy they're not because there's no reason for them to not especially if you already have a good relationship then they're not avoiding you they're just busy and i've been blessed with uh, with some friends who i mean jokes aside don't unfriend me <laughs> but uh but I've been blessed with friends who understand that yes. and they they get it and and you know during Ramadan Ramadan is an excellent time for me to catch up with people yes. like, because not much theater happens and so uh, it's just work and lots of evenings to spend with chill the chill so I actually look forward to Ramadan every year because I can actually connect again with people a month of like, catch up for you a month of like yeah you know let's do this let's meet let's do iftar let's do this late nights and you know heck we do so, iftar and sahur at the same time hey like yeah. exactly <laughs> i can do iftar and then we can just stay to like some more we can just keep going you know like, but no i'm going to see you before ramadan <laughs> not to say that we're not catching up there is ramadan but we can meet before that. <laughs> who in your mind is incredible for whatever reason. Incredible? Yeah. Like, who, who do you look at and go, oh, wow, that person is incredible. And you can take it in any direction you want. Now, these are like such hard questions. Okay, cool. You said you want to go to school, I figured. Yeah. We are in <laughs> session. Um, I think Benedict Cumberbatch is an incredible actor. He is great. I think Russell Brand. Incredible. He is also great. Human being, but like, but I would be very like intimidated to like have a conversation with Russell. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I'd just be like, I can't even like say yeah. anything that's smart or intelligent yeah. I mean, in his presence. Be, yeah, I, I prefer to be a tree and have Russell have a conversation with, with someone, someone else. else. Yeah, too. and then I'll just be that I'd tree just, and just take it. Like, yeah, yeah don't talk to me. Don't ask me questions. He's the he's the kind of person he's when like, he speaks. Yeah. Like you're like going, this guy speaks at a different level. Yeah, exactly. And I cannot remotely say anything that's like smart <laughs> in comparison. Really onto it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His brain is like, and it's like he's, he's so fast and yeah. he like the way he analyzes things. And oh yeah, Russell and Russell, for example, I find him incredible as a speaker. Like that. Yeah. Who inspires you, and what about them? Like, is inspirational to you? Like, do you have anyone that you look up to as a role model or as a mentor, whether it's in your field or in mm. life? If I say no mentors, is that bad? Not at all. Uh, I, 
I don't believe in idolizing people. Okay. I don't believe in um, in putting people on a pedestal sure. and saying he's the source for me. Sure. Because I think that I can learn from everyone. Yes. Everyone. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, I so, say this because I watch a lot of TV series and I watch a lot of movies, and from an outside perspective, it could be seen, especially in the world of you know, hustling and working hard and going for it, and I am a hard worker, but it could seem that watching TV series is a waste of time. But for me, when I watch certain TV series, like if I watch, what was something I was watching, the reruns of uh, White Collar, okay. um, or I'm watching, you know, How to Get Away with Murder, or I'm watching, um, That's what's on my list. I haven't seen that yet. Really good, really good. Or I'm watching what was that thing? Did you see Black Mirror. But yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So a few episodes. Or if I'm watching Suits as an example, right? You know, Harvey yeah. Specter. Yeah. What I'm looking at is beyond just watching a TV series. I'm like, I love the energy. I love the style. I love the writing of the episode. Yeah. Like the, who are the writers? I'm sure I can Google it, but who <laughs> write with such precision? Yeah. It's you know, fluidity. It just goes. It's punchy. Like, like Suits is an example where. If you can hold my attention while I don't go to the bathroom, or I'm yeah. willing to just wait until the episode ends, that is fantastic. Wow. I mean, you've made my movie experience at the cinema, like there's no movie that can, that can get me because I'm so used to a 45 minute intense hit yes. from such a good packed in, you know, done really episode well. that's done so well. So when I, when I see these things, I feel like as I'm watching, I'm getting the inspiration of refining how I say something, how I write. How I move, the energy. Heck, his hairstyle. I'm like, maybe I want his hairstyle. Like, um, I think uh, I find kids very inspirational. Mm. Kids really inspire me a lot because of how how they see things and how things are so new to them. Because they're things that we're used to. Yes. Right. So we look at things and we're like, oh, we're used to that. I've seen this before. I've I mean, seen you don't even before. think about it anymore. Yeah. Overlook like, it. Exactly. Uh, I mean, we're looking at this table right here, and we're kind of used to this as being the design thing, you know, different colors of wood being used. But a child would actually sit there with his finger and, like, you know, mm. explore it or explore the texture. Yes. And so I find that inspiration, you know. Um, I, we were traveling recently, well, a few years ago, not recently, <laughs> a few years ago, and uh, my friend's husband really inspired me as a traveler because the way he... Um, would like touch different leaves and mm. smell the herbs and you know I'm like wow he's very intense in he's how he into travels it, yeah, yeah. Um, and so I find everyone around me as opposed to and I feel like that's a system that works for me better as opposed to idolizing people and yes. putting them on a pedestal and say you're my mentor everything you say I will do no, not necessarily I found that doesn't work for me. Sure. And because even people who I enjoy uh, learning from, I find sometimes that they would say something that wouldn't match. Sure. You know. Um, I mean, I've learned from people how not to be. And you learn how not to. Yeah. Be. I mean, I see someone that's yeah. great at what they're doing. I go, congratulations, well done. Yeah. I'm happy and I am inspired by what they've done. But this is not how I want to lead my life. Exactly. This is not a trait I'd like to have. Exactly. Exactly, I think it's very important to uh, to kind of um, you know to, to to be very critical yes. of what you take from people and to are critical of people's opinions and very selective of what you decide to absorb yourself. Yes, I think that's very very important. Um, and so to answer your question, I don't have. A mentor. Yes. But I learn from everyone. You can take this in any direction you want. How how do you define failure and success? Oh. You know, these two words. How is it in your world? Mm -hmm. uh, do you even consider these words? Because some people don't don't really have so much of an attachment mm -hmm. to the word success or to the word and meaning of failure. I don't like them okay. because of what they could do to you. Okay, interesting. When you think of failure, then you stop trying. And when you think of success, then you also stop trying. Nice one. 
because failure makes you feel demotivated, so yes. you stop. If you are convinced that you failed, then you stop. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you're convinced that you've succeeded, then you're not motivated to keep trying more mm -hmm. because you feel that you've reached. So I don't think of them actively. Okay. I don't think of these words actively. Um, I also think of them as temporary mm -hmm. because I may fail in doing something. Now, yes. there needs to be a word after that. <laughs> or, um, I am successful in what I'm doing for the time being, but there is room. Mm -hmm. Always leave that room in case you want to, because what happens subconsciously is that your brain, if you think, oh, I failed, then what happens is your brain puts a mental block that, that would stop you from trying again Yes. at a different time of your life. Let me give you an example. I don't know how to ride a bike. Newsflash. I don't know how to ride a bike. And that is kind of, um, it's something that I feel like I would have liked to. Okay. Uh, is it ever too late? Uh, no. But I feel like I have, I risk more now. I mean, we can go down to the Dubai Marina. No, uh, wait. <laughs> because if Try I fall out. today, I break more things that are harder to put together than when I was a child. <laughs> you know, like it's, you know, when you break something when you're older, it's harder for you to like, you know. So, I, I, but having said that, no, I see your point. I think if I do decide to one day go onto a bike and learn how to ride a bike, then failure and success would mean something completely different. Okay. Because if I fall, off the bike, and I, I would need to, I would need to remove these two words from my vocabulary, sure. in order for myself to go back on the bike again. Yes, just like a kid would, because they don't yeah. have these words. They don't have these or limitations. The Absolutely, these words are limitations. It's like failure, success. They're like, they're very um, uh, limiting. Interesting. Uh, even though success has more positive uh, connotations. But exactly what you said, just the way but you said it is fantastic, it's, it's really true. It's limited, you know, I, I feel that. This limits you from trying, this limits you from trying to explore even more. Because more you feel ways. like you've reached. Yes. You know, you're like, I'm so successful. No, you can try. The minute you realize that you learn, the minute you tell yourself that you've learned everything is when you realize that life is Limited. What do you feel is the biggest lie most sorry, people? That's sorry. all right. <laughs> <laughs> We're keeping this in. What's what's the biggest lie most people believe in? The biggest lie? Yeah, most people believe in. Like you're looking at it and going, what what is wrong with you? This <laughs> you see holding so many people back when it really doesn't have to. It's too late. Yeah. It's too late. Oh, I can't do it. It's too late. Um, people say things like, I'm 39, I can't start a new dance. <laughs> For example. Yeah. <laughs> or I'm 33, I can't get into comedy. Yeah. Or like, uh, oh, I, I, I can't do it. No, I'm just not, you know, I'm not talented. Yeah. I don't have the talent to do it. And that's a big thing that a lot of people make an assumption on, right? Yeah. Talent. talent. I'm not talented. I don't have the talent to do that or this or that or whatever. But how do you know if you don't even try? You know, that's the thing. Exactly. If you don't try. And also, and also I think that uh, to do anything, talent is, uh, is a very small aspect of right. it. Right. Uh, a lot of, many things you can learn. It's a skill. Um, it helps learn it helps if you if you have the talent to learn these things faster sure but it doesn't mean that you cannot learn it if you don't have the, the talent yeah i mean italian as an example being a comedian as an yeah, example exactly a storyteller i mean you didn't just walk up going hey i'm a storyteller you must have developed that skill. you learn things i mean it helps that i already have the talent or the 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 
the disposition, the 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 um, how do you, how do I say or it? desire maybe I have the desire, but also it's for me it's easy to speak to people. So that's that is something that's inbuilt. That is a, an inbuilt. Uh, the, the feature, disposition, yeah. The feature, <laughs> the inbuilt feature, feature in this model is in this model is that I'm not scared of public speaking. Uh, I can speak to anyone and everything in the world. I am not shy. I don't even know what that means. So that helped me then become a performing artist, sure. right? Because I I didn't have to overcome that part at least. But then everything else is something that you learn sure. it's a skill yeah i took workshops i you know i i continuously till today take workshops yes if i can t if i can sign up for a workshop then i i know that i can learn from it and and i benefit from everything that is said yes so um so I think people trick themselves by thinking that, oh, I can't do it because I'm not talented. Well, they're just copying out. It's just an easy way yeah, to not try, I not agree. to face your fear, not to get uncomfortable. Yeah. Because to sign up for workshops requires sacrifice. It requires being uncomfortable, getting uncomfortable. I oh, know. yeah. I mean, all of those things. And so many of, uh, even what you said, you happen to be fortunate that you don't know what shyness is or you're okay with speaking in public. But there are a lot of performing artists who've had to overcome that barrier, yeah, absolutely. who are super successful today, they're yeah. introverts. And they're introverts, yeah. yeah. Which means that you can still do it even if you're shy. Yeah. Some people just, they're shy, 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 shy. They go on stage and they're like, no. Yeah. And then the minute they're off, they're like back into their cocoon. You know, and it's, and it's, I've seen that. I've seen people who are shy and who act and who are excellent and who are amazing. Uh, you don't have to be like, you know, it only helps with the fact that you, you're not scared when you see the audience in front right. of you. You're not like, oh no, you know, what are they, you know, I'm on stage, I'm performing, are they going to like this, you know. And you can get over that by trying. And you can get over that by trying. Just keep, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. keep trying so many times and after some yeah. time you just go. Yeah. And, I, and speaking, speaking of children, I, I tell this to a lot of people that I think every parent should consider um, introducing their kids to acting and to drama uh, because you learn a lot as a child you learn empathy for example interesting yeah because if you spend your time putting yourself in other people's shoes which is what actors do then you learn empathy right so you um, you gain so many different perspectives yeah because yeah. like you're, you're going you're actually going through the emotions and the emotions of these um, you know, of, of the character that you're playing, and you you're living their fears and their dreams and their you know their ambitions and uh, their insecurities, their moments of happiness and anger. So you 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 are them, and so in a fictitious uh, setting, context. But then when you meet someone who is a classmate and who's upset, it becomes if you are used to living this fictitious world then you're you can easily then relate to why this person is sad and you, you become more empathetic I wow, think. that is so good I haven't thought about it I believe that I really believe that acting teaches empathy I actually did a video about it once which, is it online? Uh, it's on Instagram okay so we will get that link we will also place that in the show notes and below this video but mm -hmm. that is such a good point yeah. like tip for parents put your kids into Acting school. Yeah. I, I, and I, I never thought I the benefit so. would be empathy, but when you put yeah. it in such an eloquent way, I'm like, thanks. <laughs> that is so good. Yeah, yeah, it is, it's, actually, it's actually true. There are lots of other things. I mean, you, you don't force them to become actors. Sure. Maybe they don't want to be actors. You know, don't but give them the experience. But just expose them. Yeah. You know, later on, you can decide that you know, if you can, that would be a great thing to do because I think it's. Uh, Definitely, uh, there's something for kids to learn from, from drama, from acting. So keeping the audience wide, let's say performing arts, if someone is either young or old, whoever they are, whatever they're doing, but they want to get into the performing arts, whatever it is that interests them, what would be some tips that you'd like to share? Uh, that could be either as a as either form of guidance yeah. or critical things that you know that if they have this under their belt it will give them a better chance or 
greater opportunities or help them excel in whatever field they want to be in? Uh, I think they should just do it. First of all, watch. Okay. Be exposed to whatever form of art that you think you'd like to be part of mm -hmm. or to do. Mm -hmm. uh, just be, so just that you can see how people are doing it and to you know, to, to see, uh, for example, if you want to do stand up, then watch about stand up. If you want to be a storyteller, then YouTube storytelling. Just expose yourself more so that you're so that you have wider knowledge of, of that particular area. And this is both online and offline. Like, yeah, if you can find access to them in wherever city local that you scene, are, yes. your local scene, uh, or just go online and just watch people do what you want to do. Yes, um, I think that's that's key. And the other thing is just do it. Uh, so uh, definitely uh, find yourself a course or um, you know a, a workshop in that area, uh, and and just you know work on work on the skill um, and on the technique. A lot there's of, no a excuse, lot of, there's so much out there. Yes, and also a lot of people think that, you know, uh, I'm funny, my friends think I'm funny, I can do stand-up. Uh, no. <laughs> because uh, you might be funnier than your friends. Of course, having a sense of humor helps, of course. Having community, but how do you then learn to be silent? How do you learn how to, look, to put your joke out and to, how to, um, you know, there are little uh, tips for comedy, you yes. know, like how do you reach your punchline, you know, how do you interact with the audience to make them, you know, the little things like that, which you can learn from um, watching if you don't have time or you can't go to workshops, then watch. Watch people do it mm -hmm. and, and try to attend workshops. Yes. To learn. Do you have a quote or a philosophy that you live by, like something that resonates with you? Either you remind yourself of on a daily basis or a weekly basis. When I was younger, in my 20s, it was the quote was, what would you dare to do if you knew you could not fail? Mm -hmm. And I remember the first time I read it, I was like, yes, I felt it, this is it. And then this was my driving thing. Every time I faced a situation, Kev, what would you dare to do if you knew you could not fail? Like if Richard Branson was in this thing, what would he do? But then as I grew up in my 30s, it's changed. It's changed to just appreciating life, to not stressing, to achieving, and I feel like I'm achieving a lot more than when I was in my 20s and you know, mm -hmm. hustling and pushing and having that fearless thing, to more, it's gonna be all right. And that's my guiding light, and I hope it remains this way, that knowing that I gotta give it my best, but at the end of it, if it doesn't kill me or if it doesn't work out, it's all gonna be all right. And that comes from having faith in a, in a greater being. And Absolutely, I, I agree with you, I think that, um we spend a lot of time stressing, mm. and I find that the older I get, the um, the more uh, the calmer I, I become. Yes. Uh, because I feel that uh, that life God has shown me that uh, I pull out. <laughs> I can I can survive. Yes. Uh, you know I can overcome things, and that. Uh, this too shall pass. Yes. I've seen that. I've seen things pass. And so I feel that, okay, now I can, you know, deal with things in a more uh, matter of fact, you know, what do you know? Calmer, more confident Calmer, way. Yeah. yeah. How is Lamia Tofi different today from 10 years ago? I am. Uh, or if I could rephrase it, how have you grown? <laughs> Over the last 10 years? Yeah. I mean, we hope that with age comes wisdom. Mm. I'm sure it's the case of you, not the case of many, but... Wisdom, huh? Still working on that. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, I think the last 10 years have been um, the most artistic of my life. Okay. Because uh, prior to 2009, I had nothing to do with the performing arts. Okay. I took a couple of theater classes when I was at uni, but mainly because I thought they were easy courses. They were not easy courses. <laughs> but um, other than that, uh, I hadn't done anything with the arts. So I think the last 10 years have really allowed me to express myself creatively. Mm -hmm. um, 
which is something that I, I really enjoy doing. I used to, when I was younger, I used to write poetry okay. and things like that. Um, but the fact that I'm able to ex explore this, this um, the arts, you know, in terms of my performances and all that, that has been amazing for me over mm -hmm. the last 10 years. I don't know about the wisdom, man. I don't, I don't know. No. No, I can't say that I'm wiser. I'm, I don't, I don't, in some aspects of life, I'm wiser, just I'm calmer. Yeah. I'm relaxed. I think so. I think, I think um, there is the wisdom that, that I, the, maybe the wisdom, let's just call it wisdom, the wisdom that I, I, I should always uh, follow my heart yes. and do what I love. Um, I mean, that's, I mean, jokes aside, truly, that is wisdom in knowing that yeah. you have to pursue that exactly. for fulfillment. Exactly. And, and to the wisdom to, to not uh, heed uh, the thoughts of others who try to put me down mm -hmm. or, the, um, or to my own inner voices, because that's another thing. That's like a whole other video. The inner voices, like inner vo the inner voices that tell you, no, you can't do it. No, you're not talented. No, you don't have the time. Or how, you know, uh, seriously, you should have started earlier. All these, all these voices inside us yes. that, that that talk us out of doing what we want to do. Uh, I now have the wisdom to say, uh, okay, can you like shush now? Thank you very much. I'm gonna go and do it anyways. And how do you, you know? do it now? Do you recognize it? You have to recognize it. Yeah. Because you can't shush them if you don't see them. Like if you if you don't realize what they are, you yes. need to recognize where they are when they come out to be able to control them. Otherwise, but then you actively your self talk is shh. Yeah, yeah. Then 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 I have to speak to myself. Mm. Sometimes I listen to them, and sometimes they almost convince me. Um, and then I'm like, mm, no, 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 they're doing it again. Stop it. You know, like you know. So you have to really be able to. Um, to, to understand that, you know, like I said, I think in the beginning of this interview, I said that uh, we live for a finite number of years on Earth, and uh, it's not worth it to to waste time uh, doubting yourself, yes, or doubting what you want to do, yes. It's not. It's not worth it. It's not. Life is too short, like really too short. Man, that's really good advice. It's that's so really short, good. like it's like it's, you know, even with the best estimates, it's still short. That's true. <laughs> you know, even with the most optimistic estimates, it's still short. You and have eighty years. Yeah. That's uh, fifty-two times eighty. Yeah. That's only about four hundred and fifty weekends. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and it's and it's and not to sound like you know morose or anything, but it's it's not I'm not trying to paint a, a bleak picture, but. That is to say, because it is so short, like the most of then them. just do what you want to do and just enjoy, of course, do what you want to do, you know, with the limitations that each person has. Sure. And obviously, there is, everyone has, a, you know, a, a, an ethical framework, a, a value system that you need to respect and, you know, but besides that, uh, you know, things like seizing the day or just doing what you love and you know, really pursuing your, 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 your passions off the moment is key. Because we, I really believe that every single one of us, if we see something, we, we have a vision of it, or we have that desire, or sometimes even when we complain, the reason we complain is because we see a better version of us and we're not doing it. Otherwise, we wouldn't yeah. have complained. And the reality is if you have, if you feel that there is something that you need to go for, you will never be fulfilled unless you at least give it Try attempt. Yeah, you need get to get it out of your system. You need to try to be that better version of yourself that you, and that is something that you asked me about my mantra. This is my mantra every day that I try to be the best version of myself that I can be every day. Mm -hmm. um, and when I fall short of that, I recognize it, and I realize that okay, today I haven't actually done what I want to do. Um, I am not the best version of myself because today I got angry or today I got uh, I allowed a comment to get to me right or today I did something but I was so tired so maybe I didn't do it at my best mm. potential so you acknowledge it but you don't beat yourself up about it 
No, I, 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 but I have to acknowledge it. Sure. You know, I have to acknowledge that it's that that happened. Um, so you can try again better. Because then tomorrow is a new day. Tomorrow I start. I try even better. I, you know, I cannot actively change anything that has happened two minutes ago. Sure. So I put this here. And I cannot change the fact that I did that. Yeah, the, the battery died a few minutes ago. There's yeah, not much we can I do. can't change that. Yeah. But I can now say, oh dear, maybe I should not have do this. But it doesn't mean that it wasn't there. So if this was a mistake, it oh, was no. still a mistake that I did. Right. This is better. But that doesn't mean that this didn't happen. Absolutely. It happened. And yes. you cannot change the fact that it happened. Yes. But you can change what you do with now and what you can do tomorrow. Sure. In a way. You can also plan, but still <laughs> things may not happen. But you yeah, know. that's really good. Speaking of good, what's been a good piece of advice you've received over the years? Whether it was direct advice you received or you observed it and took it on as good advice? Um, you know, there's this, uh, I can't remember the name of the movie. It's an Arabic movie. Okay. And um, I bet you my friends would know if I Google, if I text them. No worries. What's the advice? Okay. Maybe one okay. of the viewers so, so I'll tell you. can put the name in the comments below. <laughs> so one of the actors was telling the other actor, because he was complaining about the group of friends sitting and one of, one of them really wanted to have kids. And he's like, yeah, you know, he was very, this man was very rich and he had a lot of money and, um, but he had no children. And so he was about to do a very dangerous uh, procedure uh, to be able to, to you know, get kids uh, with his, his wife. And, and, and so, <clears throat> One of his friends tells him that, uh, but you you already have all the blessings that uh, that you're that you're meant to have, and he said, each one of us on earth gets the full deal, the twenty four. The way he did it, he's, he the analogy he did was uh, based on carrots, okay. like twenty four carrots. Carrots of the gold, yeah. He's like, uh, everyone gets twenty four carrots. He said. But, but they're divided differently. Mm -hmm. Some get most of the carrots in health, but not as much in money or in, you know, when it comes to children. Sure. You get, you know. So he, he basically, I, I like that. I really in, um, believed in that, um, in that concept that we all get the full deal. Yeah, so you get the full plate, just everyone, the portion size. It's just different. Different portions. Yeah, but everyone on earth is blessed. Mm. Even the people who you think, oh, look at their lives. Look at how, like, you know, look at, and you think to yourself they've been given a bad deal. But that's a bad deal because we are measuring it against what we consider is a good deal. Sure. So then it falls short. But I really, I really do believe that we've all been given, we're all blessed, and we've all been given the, the full, uh, the full deal. Just like you said, split differently. Split differently. Okay. What's been the worst advice? You know, because as much as there's good advice from <coughs> everywhere, even from movies, I've taken some really good advice from movies as well. Mm. But what's been rubbish advice that you received that you knew from the moment you heard it, like this is rubbish, based on someone else's perception. Um, not from one person or so, but there's a, there's a way of thinking uh -huh. that I kind of uh, disagree with, um, which is, uh, competitiveness, thinking that if you hide things from others or if you not allow others to have the same opportunities as you do uh, is a good thing because otherwise they will there's only uh, they have the bigger portion of the pie like a scarcity mentality scarcity mentality and I, I don't I don't believe in that I believe in abundance because mm -hmm. I believe that there's no such thing as a bigger share of the pie because as long as there are bakers there will be more pies they will make more pies nice. you know, just you know it's just maybe the end of this pie. There, there are other pies coming out. 
And so... More pies, different pies, all kinds of pies. Just get a pies, you know, maybe this pie was cherry, maybe it's... You're destined for an apple pie. I don't know, but it's I, I don't like the, the mentality of scarcity because it puts you in a panic mode. Yes. It puts you if you if you if you and and a bit it makes you, it doesn't bring out the best version of you. Yes. Because first of all you're panicking and second of all you become you become a bit of a miser in terms of your your um, your willingness to help yes, others. Yes, your attitude, your thoughts, yeah. your actions, you everything. You want to help others. Yeah. You, you feel like, no, I'm not going to tell him because if I tell him, then he's going to take my job. And, exactly. And I, and I, and I, and I you know, I, that is something that I, yeah. And unfortunately, very real and lots of it. Yeah. I, I've, I've, of I've it. seen it. I've yeah. seen it with people. I've seen people not want to help or collaborate on things because they feel like you're going to steal uh, their, their work. Uh, from them. Um, it's funny, like this podcast, people think I'm a motivational speaker and a public speaking coach, that I would never do it. But I'm bringing on the show motivational speakers, public speaking yeah. coaches. And people will think, why are you bringing the competition? Because I don't see it as, as a competition. competition. Yeah, I do. Hey, everyone has a different voice. And like you said, there's yeah. heaps of bakers and heaps of pies. And that person's pie and my pie, yeah. we could have a slice of each other's. but. We're destined for different things. Yeah, I mean, competition exists, but it's but it's how you deal with it. Yeah. I mean, I, I do believe that of course there's competition because, I mean, two two doctors, two different clinics, uh, same specialization. I choose to go left and not right. Yes. They're still in competition for me. Sure. In a way. Sure. Right? So there's the. But that's just me. Yes. There are others. Yes. We're gonna go. Yeah. Others are gonna go. So. I mean, what you said was really nice because the mm -hmm. scarcity, the mentality, doesn't bring out the best in you. No. It just doesn't. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you think it's in just, abundance. Remember what I was saying earlier about success and failure. Yes. They're concepts that don't bring out good feelings, and hence they're limiting. Right. And that's it. Mm -hmm. So, so that is it. So, when you feel like the scarcity, it means that you're not. Uh, then you're then you're desperate. Yes. Then you're, you're limited uh, for sure. You're, you're desperate because you're like this. It's it's this or never. Then you panic because if someone else takes something that you think is going to be yours, and you're like, oh, that was supposed to be mine. It'll just you make know, you a terrible person. It just, no one it, just you, yeah. it just makes you. It just it's not it's all negative. Yes. You know, and it's not right. And, and I and I do believe that. I do believe that when you're when you're doing. Uh, uh, it's easier to approach life uh, from an, uh, an approach of abundance than from scarcity. I mean, I can tell you, for example, that I, of course, have uh, competition. Sure. Um, we all do. And uh, and whether it is in storytelling, whether it's in hosting, whether it's this, because people want different things. Mm -hmm. You know, clients want something else. Clients uh, expect, for example. The host of a show to be dressed different, yes, to look different, yes, right, to um, to 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 be male, to be sometimes male, which you can to do, to be uh, which I can do, I don't know, be of a certain very very common to have nationalities yes. uh, mentioned and, and you know specified, it. and that's that's fine, mm -hmm. you know, I am yes, I am a potential candidate mm -hmm. for this, but. I probably will not get it because they want something else. Sure. That doesn't mean that there's something else that I won't be taken for. Your pie is different. My pie is just a different pie. Yeah. I was just going to come out from a different bakery. Maybe not this one. Maybe I'm not meant to eat this one. Maybe I'm not right. eating another. So um, I don't like the, the idea of uh, it's very, it's very, it comes from the economy. Yes. Market shares. You put it beautifully with the bakers and pies. That's fantastic. <laughs> um, you work with a lot of kids, and no doubt you'll be affecting far many kids than a parenthood with just one or two or three kids. If you could only impart one lesson or one trait or one way of thinking to give kids the best chance of living a full life, what would you like to impart with them? And you could only be limited to one. Like, What do you feel is the most critical thing that will give them the best chance of living their full potential? Stay curious. Mm. I think it's very important because we lose that. 
when you asked me that question, I just thought of what is the one thing that makes us different from kids. The one thing that we've lost along the way is that sense of curiosity, that sense of um, uh, wanting to explore. We, we, we become, uh, how do I say it? There's a word for it. We become complacent. Yes. We, 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 we have fun, what we have, my nine to five, you know, this. Because I don't, I'm not curious to see what it's like to live beyond beyond the good, beyond my comfort zone. Yeah, there yeah. is a world out there, and everything great yeah. is right outside of that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Five hundred years from now, however history reads, it's gonna say, you know, Lamia Tofi was. <laughs> how would you like history to read that? <laughs> was. <laughs> Love, Say that again. Love me, Tofi. Say what? <laughs> um, What's the dent you want to make in history? Okay. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I want to make a dent in history. That's like too presumptuous. But I just uh, I don't want to to neither make a dent or to uh, to be remembered as a sore <laughs> as someone who is not good. When I, when I die, I would like people to think of me favorably. And um, because at the end, that this is what it is like you die and you just you go, right? So you, you become just a memory. Yeah, and I just because think. you don't exist. Yeah, but your great, great, great grandkids would look at the book of history and, you know, if they want to know something about you, like what would be that summary like? I would like them to think that. Stay curious? What? Did I, yeah, I don't know. I never lost that child inside me. Mm -hmm. uh, That's what it feels like when, every time we catch up. And I think it kind of brings out my child as well. That's probably why I feel good. <laughs> that I never. That's what it feels like when, when we meet that I'm still a child. Well, I, when I'm thinking about it, the energy, the feel, like, it just, yeah. I guess it's childlike, right? Because when kids meet up, they're just ah, and they're just they're having they're doing their thing. Yeah, yeah. And and adult life, when you're meeting normal people, is them. <laughs> and the smile, they're like eh, yeah, yeah. And then there's that kind of like true belly laugh or yeah. the ease and just yeah. <laughs> I think that's you know what how I, to describe it. But it, but it is it's just being unpretentious and and, um, and it's very important. For to continue being unpretentious. Um, I don't think I'll ever become a diva. <laughs> or um, to, I don't want to get my head bigger than what it is. Mm. Just, real. Just be real. Yeah. You know, just, just uh, because, I, like I said, you know, there's nothing positive uh, necessarily that comes out of fame uh, or of being rich. Help others, but in terms of like these, these are the things that they mean nothing if you're not genuinely happy. Yes. So you just have to remember the poor needs to be happy, and everything else is a frill. Yes, on top of it. Well said. Well said. Mm -hmm. Hey, yeah, I know you're not feeling well. You're losing <laughs> your voice. Um, I'm but, losing my voice. But I really appreciate that you made the time. And Thank I know you're busy, and it's a busy season as well, uh, what you're doing. It's crazy. Yeah. But this has been so much fun. Thank, Thank you, I appreciate it. Honestly, um, you're so easy to speak to. Thank you. Um, you as well. Because, I mean, maybe because we know each other, but you also, like, you know how to, like, make your guests feel at ease. And so, this Thank has you. been great. Thank you, I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, and this is actually caught up. Oh, yeah. Well, at the end of it, I, this is the only way I could bring her in. I was like, let's catch up. There's just going to be a camera there, and my brother who's you know recording for the podcast. But yeah, let's just catch up. No, so it was really just a, thank you. Just I didn't up. come just for that, but you know, it, it was the nice podcast to, or the catch up. The, I didn't come just to take this. No, but I mean, like in the sense that I didn't. I, I came because I wanted to to do this, but also it's nice to catch up because we've been saying we needed to catch up forever to the tune of a couple of years. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so we did it. So before I close, yeah. 
one last question because we live in a world where attention is hard to get. If you had the world's attention for 60 seconds, what would be your parting advice? What would you speak non-stop for 60 seconds? Or up to 60 okay. seconds. It could just be 5 <laughs> seconds if you like. But imagine if you had 60 seconds of the world's attention. I think uh, I would say to the world, um, be kind. Uh, that is key, I think, to, to be able to survive life. You need to be kind to others, um, but also kind to yourself. Uh, being kind to yourself means that you will allow yourself the chance to do things that makes you happy. Uh, because when you're cruel to yourself, you put limitations and you judge yourself of not being capable of doing things. And so just be kind, make kindness uh, the core of your relationship to yourself and to the world, I think. And it's true because uh, you feel kindness, like your presence, you can feel the kindness in your presence. Thank you. So thank you That's for being real. Kind. No, it's true. It's, it's true. Kind. Yeah. And anyone that knows me knows that I'll only just say it how it is. Um, for the for the audience who are watching or are listening, um, if they'd like to follow you, what are you active on in terms of social? I'm so bad at this, um, but I do have Instagram. Okay. Yeah. So let me tell you on Instagram. Maybe we can put a link. We will put the links yeah. as you update your website or wherever you're yeah. going to do all your projects. Put it all there. We will edit it and to make it available on the podcast. And also, if you're watching, you know, the video, we'll, we'll make sure that the links are put in there. Uh, folks, I hope you enjoyed the show. I hope that um, you got gems that was shared by Lamia. I know that I received a lot of gems, and when I go through, because I do, I go through every episode a second time to take my summary notes down. Um, and when I do that, and I'm sure that when I do this video, there are going to be a lot of gems that will either be highlighted again, or sometimes there are just things that we pick up the second time around. So I'm super excited about that. Uh, so I do recommend watch this video again or listen to it in the podcast. and Really just take on what you said about you know staying curious and you know, just going for it and trying because we don't know how much talent we have um, and you will never know unless you really give it a go. Uh, as, you all, as you know that with the show we don't aim to show off. Uh, the reason I bring in guests, you know, I bring in my friends is because we want to help you get inspired, get informed and get going. Um, and from a beautiful and kind soul like you, uh, there's so much to be learned. Thank so, you. Thank you for thank the time and thank you for the thank inspiration. You. Oh my God, I can't believe what you've been saying. <laughs> <laughs> it's all true. Thank um, you. Folks, if you have any questions, please put your uh, questions down below. I'll try and answer them. I'll ask maybe Lamia to, yeah, to answer them. Um, that will be fun. Yeah, um, I think it will be fun. Ask your questions. Mm -hmm. We'll answer them. Uh, tell us, is it blue or purple? I know. <laughs> I still Seriously. Think. Is? <laughs> I think, yeah. It's blue. Well, we'll just tally up a vote on the side. Exactly. <laughs> I'm Kevin Abdurrahman. This is How Do They Do It. I have it up here loud. Okay, wait. I'm gonna be loud. No, my loud is not as loud as you are. You want me to yell it? Yes. <laughs> I'm loud now. I'm going deaf now. <laughs>